Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Pretty Good Gaming Podcast, episode number 82. My name, oh, hello, I cross side podcast with, with the guy. I God. knew something was missing. Yeah, the Welsh intro, right? I missed it out on one week, and uh, nobody noticed it, but anyway. The only Welsh language gaming creators on YouTube. I, I, would, I would probably bet that that is the case. No. I don't know if there are any. Definitely not. Definitely not. My name's Gareth Evans. I'm joined today by Mr. Henry. Let's take a look at Next Gen Cooper. Yeah, I mean, it's the big thing. Hot on everyone's lips. And I've kind of wanted to cover it this week. But it's been one of those where, like, I, I wasn't fortunate enough to be given either one, let alone both, like some people have been. Uh, so I haven't, I haven't felt like I can really comment on it or add anything particularly interesting. And I was like, okay, well, I could do, like, a review roundup type thing. But because it's an entire console or pair of consoles rather mm. rather than just a, a single game for one platform it would take ages so i thought it'd be better to do it in in a in a more discuss, dis, discursive is that the word mm. casual conversational format in a podcast so i can let it run as long as i want yeah um, we, i mean that's the best thing to do i think um yeah we, so we're going to be jumping in with what some people are talking about with the with regard to the next next gen, I think the uh, Xbox is out. PlayStation's coming out next week, so well for us in the UK, it will. Uh, in the US and I think a few other places, but mainly the US and I think Japan, they have it today at the time of recording, which oh. is the twelfth. Oh, there you go then. So um, yeah, I mean a lot of people have had. I I've had a look to see if I can get hold of one. Uh, Smiths and where was game the only two outlets I've seen for the Xbox Series X and there's just no stock nope not even a sniff so nope. uh, good luck <laughs> if you've got one yeah, I was looking at PS5 stuff earlier when they said that they weren't gonna ship them to re to physical retail stores I was like okay well I mean like I it's not ideal but I can kind of understand it but it, they didn't make him make more available online because it was still sold out on Smith's game, Amazon, and Amazon US. But if you want to uh, pay seven hundred quid for one, you yeah. go on Am on uh, eBay. Yeah, <laughs> you, know? you don't want to be doing that. Um, I was looking at the um, subscription one because my, funnily enough, my Game Pass subscription, my Game Pass Ultimate subscription for Game Pass on the PC is about to expire beginning of next month. So I thought, well, I'm going to pay for that anyway. And if I lump it in with getting a new Xbox, it's going to be cheaper in the long run because mm -hmm. the price of both things are actually cheaper to do that. So Yeah, what do they call it? It's, it's uh, Xbox Access All Areas or All Access. Or all Access. Like yeah. The, <laughs> yeah. You, you get a Xbox tag around your neck, you go backstage and you can see Phil Spencer snorting coke. Um, yeah, I mean... <laughs> Maybe it's that, or because there's so many X's in it, it sounds like a, a porn subscription or something. Isn't it? Access all areas. Well, it's like, we don't call it the PlayStation 5, we call it the PS5, but a lot of people are still calling the Xbox the Xbox Series X. So I'm trying to get in the, the shorter yeah. version. So it's the XSX, but that's quite SSX. hard to say quickly, and it sounds SSX. a bit raunchy. I'm going to subscribe careful. to my SSX. SSX. <laughs> see, see, you got it wrong, because it's, it's tricky. SSX. Or the, or the Series SSX. X is yeah. easier, but this, this Xbox Series X is too fucking long to say. Anyway, shall we have a look at some uh, reviews? That would be good. That would be good. So this isn't, ob obviously, this isn't an, like, an exhaustive list of all the reviews, but I've taken... Uh, I've looked at some of the biggest outlets and then I've kind of collated some notes of their, their shared sort of talking points with a few quotes here and there. So I've gone to IGN because you may not like them, but they just are the biggest. You can't escape that. They are the biggest and will do the most coverage. So the PS5 one is by a guy called Luke Riley. He's their games editor and their Xbox Series X. See, I just said the full title. The XSX was by Ryan McCaffrey, who's their executive editor of previews. And just on a quick note for their video reviews, which I thought was quite an interesting little little uh, talking point their ps5 review which went live on the 6th of uh, november so what last week uh is at 2 million views 6.8 thousand comments 48 thousand likes and 4.6 thousand dislikes meaning it's a like dislike ratio of 91 percent the xbox series x review however which came out a day earlier is significantly lower on views it's at 890 thousand 4.3 thousand comments 22 thousand likes and 2.4 thousand dislikes but a pretty similar like to this like ratio of 90% of, of those console war bitches just saying, I hate Xbox or I hate PlayStation. Mm. And conveniently, I decided to not pick a side and I'm wearing a, a Nintendo t-shirt today. <laughs> so I'll, we'll go play in the corner with my, my own ball. But yeah, I, just, I just thought it was interesting to see 
how significantly better the PlayStation review is doing purely for them in, views, in terms right? of like online engagement. That's what I mean. Mm. Yeah, because every metric there is much bigger than the uh, well, if you, Xbox. One. If you look at them, the it's just under a million views on the Xbox Series X. One. Yeah, that may have changed by the time you're watching this. This is at the time. But the engagement obviously. is actually higher, right? Because um, if you yeah, more comments per view. Per view, yeah. Um, so there's more people commenting on the Xbox video um, per view, and um, yeah, the like ratio is about the same. Um, so yeah, I mean, it is what it is. It doesn't mean anything it really. Just like Not more really, people but. are interested in knowing what the PS5 mm. is doing, or double the amount of people. Um, I would say that's just because of the PS4 being so successful in like a sort of casual mainstream audience. So a lot of that audience will just come on and watch it. Whereas the, the real gamers who actually give a shit might engage more and comment and yeah. like and stuff. So anywho, so reviews from them. Then some from Digital Foundry who are obviously the big tech people. These are the people who are most likely to listen to for something like this with it, where it's very, very tech focused. Uh, the, both the PS5 and XSX ones were done by Richard Ledbetter who is their tech editor and in an ideal world you'd have the same person review both of them for every outlet but realistically that's really fucking difficult because there's only so much time you don't yeah. you can't just spend you know too much time on one or not on the other uh, so I understand it but well it was, it was weird like because I watched both the IGN reviews I watched uh, I think the, the Series X Ryan McCaffrey review of from IGN and he scored the console an 8 and I'm like what? Why? You, what's that yeah. score what does the score mean? yeah I, I, I started seeing I, that I, a few like, outlets eight? and started putting numbers on them I was how like, can you what? score a console 8? what's it what? that doesn't make because, any sense like, compared to, yeah. to what? Like, <laughs> there's no I didn't get frame it. of reference for that like this is there's a totally unique bit of I, I don't know yeah uh, that's what and he's yeah, not so he's I, obviously not played the ps5 so how the how the hell can he compare yeah. it with that i mean it, it, yeah this is what i mean <laughs> anyway so uh we've got game informer so the ps5 one is matt miller who's the magazine content director xsx is by brian shane digital editor so these are different people again uh good old polygon ps5 chelsea stark managing editor xsx chris plant editor-in-chief digital trends now the main reason i put them in is because they're one of the lower ones on um on Metacritic, but we'll get to that. Uh, both of them are by Chris Morris, who is their writer and editor, but he's not like a staff writer. He's a freelance thing. And I always think it, it's kind of odd if you're quite a big major kind of media outlet, why you'd uh, freelance some some of the most important stories. I would I would have assumed you'd just give it to anyone on staff, mm. but maybe no maybe no one was available. And then my, my, my absolute favourite, and I'm sure many of you have already seen it because a lot of YouTubers have already covered it because our podcast records on a Thursday and all this shit happened on like last Thursday and Friday. Kotaku's review for the PS5 by Ian Walker, who is a staff writer. Oh boy, it's a good one. It's classic <laughs> Kotaku. You, you, yeah. you know where it's going with that. Yeah. And then the X Xbox Series X one is by Mike Farhi, who is a senior reporter. Anywho, so on PS5, we'll start with that. IGN called it great and gave it an 8 out of 10 again how they came to that conclusion I don't understand because surely you don't have anything to compare but you know what whatever people like numbers if on this shit scores, they probably get yeah. I mean, yes. what does it actually mean though what do you get from a score oh someone oh IGN only scored the PS5 uh, an 8 so I'm just going to hold out on it like what what, what, what does yeah. it even mean? No, no, you're and not. And someone else would give it a nine if Ryan McCaffrey, the Xbox guy, did it. Maybe he would have given it a nine. Uh, maybe even a ten. So Who fucking knows? Ridiculous. Uh, so, and the quote is: "What the PS5 lacks in subtlety, it makes up for in potential thanks to its rapid SSD and remarkable DualSense controller." So, in particular, he was a huge fan of the uh, the controller because it's all all singing, all dancing, has a bunch of fancy things in it. Yeah. Questions about whether or not that's just going to be like a gimmick because it well, all comes down to whether the devs. Like support it's the, ha it's the haptic it, feedback yeah. isn't it it's yeah. and um astro's playroom or something the game that comes installed on the console itself a lot of people who i've who i've watched my tech reviewers and that i've played it they're, they're singing the praises of this um mm. haptic system because it, there's just so many variables with it like if you walk over different textures of floor like if, it, if it's a wood texture or if it's like a, a puddle or something it gives so many different haptic yeah. responses that people are saying, oh, it's on another level. Yeah, that's great for, like you, you mentioned yourself, yeah, that's great for Astro's Playroom, yeah. but how well is it going to be supported? Um, obviously, first-party PlayStation developers, um, you know, ha 
they're probably most likely to support it. Do they have to yeah. support it? Is it going to make a great deal of difference to the games? Is it going to um, increase your enjoyment of the game and, and your immersion personally? I, those are questions yet to be answered. Yeah. See, I love a good bit of haptic stuff, but yeah, it comes down to whether or not it's actually used. Having the stuff there is cool and it is innovative, certainly more than the Xbox has done because they've gone for a more, uh, if it ain't broke, don't fix it kind of approach with their controller. They, they just left it virtually yeah. the same. C- certainly the early impressions are very positive and warm towards it. Mm. But like I said, it be- you know, the Wii, the Wii um, move... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, that was that was all great when we first got it, and then we started smacking people in the face when we were like playing tennis and that, and then it was just a bit bit. It turned out, and yeah, I don't know. It just kind of it, it it grew the old very quickly. Off, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, so another one from a game informer who gave it an A minus. The PlayStation Five again. How 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 A minus com- like in relation to to what? Yeah. Uh, the PlayStation Five <laughs> is take an a incredibly- test at school. Well, it, yeah. it's the only test that they're doing this year, isn't it? Because they they've sacked off the GCSEs and the A levels, but the PlayStation <laughs> gets a test. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean it's only an A minus. Though, what could they do to get to a to a to an A plus? You know, but maybe that's his um, predicted score. Maybe because he didn't take the exam. <laughs> Yeah, he did his mock exam, but he's not done the real deal. The PlayStation 5 is an incredibly powerful and sophisticated piece of gaming hardware, sometimes virtually eliminating the tedium of loading screens that have played console gaming for for decades. While its outward aesthetic is attractive, it's also overpowering and the design won't please everyone. So I think that's what a lot of the reviews kind of come down on. The Xbox is pretty... It's simple, it's basic, and it fits nicely in your little in your cabinet or your shelf or whatever. But then there's the PS5, and you know it's there. It's making a statement. Yeah. It's, it's loud as fuck and doesn't really blend in. Some people will probably like that, others maybe not so much. And with regard to the um, the loading times too, one of the video comparisons that I saw between current gen, um, new gen, and the two you know the two consoles, the PS5 is quicker. And almost mm. every single one. It might only be a couple of seconds over the Series X on some occasions. It might be 15 seconds if you're loading the game in. Uh, it might take like 45 seconds on a um, on a PlayStation 5, and then a minute on um, Series X. And then the X, the old console might have been three minutes or something just to load the gate to get the game from yeah. from you know initiating it to playing. Um, but the, you know the, the SSD works a charm here, and the pace that you for if you're looking to get gaming straight away from from the amount of seconds that it takes for you from you to click the button to get into gaming, PS PS5 is the one you should go yep, for. Yep, that's that's it. Uh, then there's Polygon said the PlayStation 5 is a worthy upgrade to the PS4, but it might not be essential to grab this holiday. The PS5 isn't going to be the alpha and the omega of your entertainment system, but it will make games faster, smoother, and more striking, and that's all I really want from it. So uh, the the games thing is a real problem for both systems in particular, uh, and a lot of people have been saying it about the Xbox mm. more so than the PS5, because on paper it is pow- it's more powerful in terms of its teraflopage and whatnot. We've all, we've, you know, we've all spoken about that hundreds of times, but there's nothing at launch to really push it, to really take it further, uh, and everything's just old games that already exist and you've already played, and of course they're going to look better because they're designed to run on um, inferior systems. I mean, that's. Then, I mean, it's an interesting discussion point about lack of games, but a, a lot of reviewers are saying that. But however. If you've just forked out on a big, expensive new console, you don't want to be forking out on too many new games as well. And you want to bring over your um, your old, you know, you, you've got your old all your old games that are there in your, um, in your, you know, being able to be able to play right now. You know, it it doesn't matter that there's not so many new games right now to me. I mean, that's the way I'm seeing it anyway. Maybe, maybe a lot of people disagree, and maybe it's mm-hmm. just the, I think the reviewers are putting a lot of emphasis on this. If there was like ten launch games, yeah, that would be great for a few people who could afford maybe an extra three or four games with the new console. But most of us, I mean, you know, Assassin's Creed Valhalla, for example, that's a new game. That's on both of those systems. That doesn't detract from how good the console is. We're talking about Cyberpunk. That's a new game. It's coming out on both systems. That's not going to detract about uh, how good these co- consoles are at launch. I, 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 it's just my opinion. I can see by your face you're not agreeing yeah, with me I'm entirely. Not, I'm, not, I'm not agreeing with you on that one. Like, if, if I, this is part of the reason I've not bought either of them, because if, I, if I'm getting a fancy-pantsy next gen system that's meant to be you know the bees knees and it's doing all this f- fancy stuff i want a game that i can only play there an exclusive that's going to really take it to the next level and be 
next gen, you know what I mean? Uh, and yeah, running games faster and smoother and harder, better, faster, stronger, all that. Yeah, it's cool. It's nice. Yeah. But uh, it's it's fine as is. Like so, I'm, I'm, so you're in favour been... of exclusives. That's what you're saying. You're a you're a wow. you're a PlayStation <laughs> shill. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> I'm, oh, no, just, I'm just not, hearing I'm, the con the com comments down in the in the. See, you you defaulted to PlayStation shill, but I was actually thinking, why the fuck doesn't uh, Xbox have Halo Infinite? That's their right. biggest loss. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. That that was actually where my brain went. Uh, but yeah, like, I, there's nothing to like mean. I need to buy it like right now. I'll still I'll probably get one eventually. Yeah, like, ab absolutely. But there's there's no reason for me to get it immediately because I can happily. I'm fine to sacrifice some faster load but, times and, and okay, smoother we can we can accept that. that, right? Your desire to get one is one thing, right? But the experience of owning a console is itself, which is what they're reviewing, right? What it's like to own the console. Their review should that hinge so much on whether they're, they're brand new exclusive games or not, because that that is involved in the decision well, to get one, not in um, not in the in the evaluation of how good this thing is, which is what the review is for. Do you see what I'm saying? No, I, I, I still think it's relevant because they, if all of the games only use, like, let's say, 50% of its potential, you then, and that 50% is only, let's say, 10% better than the current gen, there's nothing to, to justify, to, to a lot of people, and me included, nothing to justify spending so much money on one of them to get to that 100% capacity, if you know what I mean. You're only gaining 10% by paying 500 bucks or whatever, Whereas if you wait a little bit, you can pay probably slightly less. It's not going to come down massively, but like a little bit less, and then get seventy percent of the power, then eighty percent of the power. But at least that's how I think of it. Like there's nothing that I can't already play now in a tolerable enough state. Yeah. Like obviously the performance will be better, but I I don't care enough to pay that much money for what I think is a a nice addition, but not essential. Yeah, I, I understand what you're saying. I mean, I'm a PC gamer, so it's all it's all relative to me anyway. Because I, it's not a great, up, a huge upgrade if I'm going to get a, a new console because I've already got you know a pretty decent um, setup here. So I see what you're saying. What well, uh, the way I'm the way I'm looking at it though is is how good how good is this? Um, I guess I guess if you look at it the way is that you can't assess the system itself very well if you haven't got games which maximize. Mm. The, um, the 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 hardware and things, so you can't really assess the system to its max potential without those games available. Yeah, and you can't look at it without the games, right? You can't just look at the system. You have to consider the games. And as a as a value proposition, it it should be noted that these games, yeah, they 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 run better, but there's nothing that jumps further or takes the next step yet. There may be eventually, and then perhaps their reviews will need to be updated because you could say. Oh, there was no games at launch. It was pretty good, but could be better. And then, say Halo comes out, and it actually is amazing, which it's probably not going to be, given all the development problems they're going yeah. through. But if it is, then you can come back and say, all right, now it's worth it. But now if, it's... if Halo is available on the previous Xbox 2... Well, perhaps that's a bad example, because Halo isn't going to be able to well, that, fully... Well, Microsoft has said that they're going to support their old yeah. consoles for, for like two yeah, years. So, <laughs> yeah. you, know, you know, if you think about it like that, there's no real incentive to buy... Um, the new console yeah. for two years, but um, uh, the way right. I, the that, way that's I'm exactly my thought. But process the way on that I'm one. thinking about it is right. You know, if you get a new um, console, there's ray tracing on these consoles, right? And you can play Cyberpunk for mm -hmm. you know you can buy a console for 400 quid, play Cyberpunk with ray tracing right now, you know, or you could you could hold off and you know you play Cyberpunk on the older older systems and 1080p or whatever. I, I or you know upgrade upscale 4K. I See what I'm saying? Go in there. Like, it doesn't yeah, matter that it. there's no exclusives. You can still, you can still buy and appreciate these systems. Mm, definitely. With the games but, that that are yeah. that, that are third party. Totally. Just for me, I'm willing to wait for something more substantial because I can still enjoy these games. Like eventually, they're not going anywhere. Like yeah. Assassin's Creed Valhalla, the higher frame rates and actually running well without crashing on me. It's crashed on me six times. It's not not quite seven yet. Not like seven yet. <laughs> But Watch Dogs, I played for a much shorter period of time because it's just not... That's, right, I'm not going to talk about it loads because I've done my impressions video and I'm all, I'm still trying to do my review, but I've still not fucking finished it. I'm like 60, well, almost 60 hours in and it's still going. And like, it's good and all. It's getting and I don't want to say it's now. too long. Because I don't, 
Well, I'm not saying, I'm not, I wouldn't necessarily say it's boring, but I'm like, because the way you, you visit these different places and you recruit, you know, you don't, you don't even recruit people. You do missions for them. Then they like join you, but they don't, they don't like do anything. They just say they're going to join you for some big fight, which I feel like is coming soon. But I'm like, do I have to do that that many fucking times? <laughs> like, come on. <laughs> I'm st there's so many, not even secondary characters, like third tiers, tertiary characters. Like, I don't know your fucking name. They mentioned someone. Like, I don't know who that is because you've given me so many now. Anyway, we're going to move on from that. I've got one more yeah. uh, quote thing from one of the PS5 reviews. Digital Trends, this is four and a half stars. They said, showcasing the next gen's potential, the PlayStation 5 is everything gamers wanted and more. While storage space is a real concern and Sony's long-term view of industry shifts is questionable, uh, that's talking about like cloud stuff and, and streaming and whatnot, uh, there's no denying that this is a true next generation machine. So uh, those are just some of the kind of round up quotes of what they think in their conclusions and whatnot but there's a few more details about the ps5 so in general the the wide belief is that it looks big and it does look kind of cool but if you're putting it into your system into your like tv stand with your tv there and your speakers there it it's gonna look bold mm. and noticeable so if you're trying to go for like a kind of minimalist vibe in your house you've got it all laid out then there's this huge white thing which IGN describes as a piece of luggage that's stuffed too full to zip up properly which I think is a fucking class way to describe it uh, it's probably not going to look great in your system and you might not like it whereas the Xbox on the other hand it, it's sleeker nicer minimalist and it's there and it fits nicely uh, the PS5 is 40 centimeters tall so that's one centimeter for the stand which is actually actually massive when you put it next to uh, the PS4 and, and other consoles you can really see how bloody huge it is uh, the UI is meant to be very, very similar to the PS4, which we have seen in some trailers and stuff, but this, again, this is what the reviewers are saying. Uh, they said, it, IGN again said, it's significantly more elegant in a number of ways, and in general, just smooths the whole process of looking at friends lists and your downloads and shit. It's still, to me, it doesn't look like a, a big enough improvement over the PS4's one, because it was still a bit of a pain in the ass to navigate, but it, it, cause they've got cards now, which look quite cool. You can do little activities, and it'll give you hints if you're stuck, or um, like trophies and, and stuff but it, it's it, it's more of the same but not entirely uh, apparently you can transfer games that you have saved uh, over your network on from like an asset oh what, what is it? it's not from an ssd you can't store ps5 games on an ssd and stick them in until an update comes next year or so, something like that i can't quite remember but there's some storage problems there because the storage on the system is uh, where is it? i've got it written down somewhere it's gonna be a bit of a problem because it's 825 gigabytes on the box, that's what it says, on your super fancy uh, SSD that's gonna load load your games before you can even sit down. But only 667 of that is usable because of the uh, operating system. Yeah, that's that's a problem for a lot of people. You know, it, it's, it sounds like a lot, but when you take off like an, almost a quarter, <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it, it soon goes, especially when you've got the big um, big games that you you stick on it. Yeah, you know, the games like are getting Call bigger. Call of Duty now is like over a hundred. Um, gigabytes now, but you can un you can now uninstall different parts of it, which is going to be quite useful. Right. But, um, but it's, I just, it's just hope you got a, a fast internet um, connection. Fast. Yeah, that's that was my thoughts. Oh yeah, you can transfer over your network. I'm like, okay, but how long is that going to fucking take? Yeah. <laughs> like, come on now. Uh, but in terms of the, the speed itself, it's really really fast. So I took this chart from I think it was uh, Kotaku, and it's it's very impressive so this is ps5 versus ps4 load times bug snacks is 13 seconds versus 40 marvel spider-man miles morales is 15 versus 82 so is this loading is... times from boot up of the game uh yeah i, I believe so from, from um, clicking continue to get in, into the game to play it I, I think from go like pressing start on the 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 dashboard and then going going in. I might be wrong, but I think that's the case. Oh, menu to because gameplay. It's... It says console menu to gameplay. Yeah, there you go. Uh, Bloodborne is twenty nine versus fifty five. Sekiro is forty four versus sixty six. Resident Evil Two Remake is forty five versus sixty seven. Ghost of Tsushima is sixty one versus seventy nine. Red Dead Redemption Two is eighty versus one hundred and forty two. So that is mm. seriously optimized. Uh, Borderlands 3 is 81 versus 222. Again, that's very impressive. Last of Us Part 2 is 83 versus 120. Assassin's Creed Odyssey is 108 versus 170. So uh, across the board on those games, it's quite significantly faster in a lot of cases. Absolutely. And, and you know, Spider-Man's the, the standout there. 15 seconds down from 80. 
I mean, the others are around about half or just a, just mm. just a bit slower than half uh, the the speed. That one is, you know, they must have done a good job optimizing that or taking, um, you know, making good use of the, the hardware and the PS5 because that is a blistering fast. Well, they've even had to alter the way they do fast travel in the game because in the, the first one, when you fast travel, you, Spider-Man takes a subway and you get a little kind of animation of him on the, on the subway train. Mm-hmm. It's quite funny. Now, they don't need that because it's so fast. Yeah. Uh, so you, you can toggle it on or off. So if you want to just get there quick, you'll fast travel and poof, you're there. Or you can choose to watch through this little kind of funny animation yeah. if you want to, I don't know, maybe go get a beer or something. I don't know. <laughs> uh, but So on the top of the controller again, they were, IGN in particular, really, really liked it. Everyone likes it, but IGN really, like, really liked it. Uh, the DualSense controller boasts the biggest potential. The range of haptic feedback the DualSense can provide is quite astonishing. So they uh, were really, 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 really into that. The, ra- the range, though, the range. I mean, it can, the do, range. It can do, the, you know, this movement and that movement, you know, this, whereas what we just used to is like one vibration. Yeah. Put, and, and the fact that it might have five or six now, it's like, oh, the range is astonishing. It's like, yeah, but it's still only five or six. And it's it? like the, the rumble can be so light that it's imperceptible or so massive. But it's like, yeah, yeah, that's cool. But is it a gimmick? Are other games actually going to use it? Mm. Uh, the, the triggers buzzing or resisting your actions, that sounds ha- kind of cool, I, but could be really annoying. I hate haptics. I'll be honest. I, just, I always turn them off. They do my head in. They do. I'm a PC gamer. I don't like haptics. Yeah. So for somebody trying to sell me, oh, it's got lo- it's got loads of different haptics now. I'm like, it loads more settings to turn off for me. Yeah, I mean that. You can turn all of them off. I'm pretty sure. Um, <laughs> but really, really, all that matters. Can I press X and jump? Can I pull the trigger <laughs> and someone dies? Like that's yeah. it. That's all that really matters. Like, I mean, uh, I, sorry, sorry to interject here, but I, I'm just having a, like a flat. When when you're under fire. When you're playing like Call of Duty or something, the last thing you want to be putting you off when you're trying to line up a shot is the bloody rumble going off. It's like, just sod off. Just <laughs> see that's the so long. Well, I mean that could be the moment to get you into haptics because maybe when there is a grenade going off, it is just just a little bit, just a little delicate rumble if it's over there. But when it's right next, to it, it's really. Who, I mean, I don't fucking know. It's one of those things you have to feel it for yourself. The, and yeah, decide uh, the, if it's, the, if it's for the you. other. Um, Notable inclusion in the in the new PS5 controller though is the trigger. You know, they've got like a variable uh, pressure trigger, yeah. um, and that is an awesome feature. You think about like shooting games, for example. Um, you can you can I don't know if it, if you ca- can do this, but it can have like a a lot of pressure to begin with, and then have it snap back when you fire. Imagine that, yeah. like like a proper feel feel like you're shooting yeah, a gun. Exactly. That's exactly the kind of haptics I was I was talking about that I, I like. The rumble stuff, I mean, it, it's, it's just rumble at the end of the day. But yeah. pulling the trigger, again, but it could get really annoying because it depends on how much it actually feels like it. Although if it is annoying, you can always turn it off. Yeah. And again, other games have to like facilitate it being used. Uh, but it, it sounds like it should be cool. Yeah. Like, But I think, uh, who was it at the time? I think Xbox, when they launched the Xbox One, said that they could do the same thing. Like, when you pull a trigger and you fire a bullet, it's going to feel different to when you pull a bowstring. Mm. Or if you run out of ammo, it's going to click differently. And we uh, it's one of those, again, we've just got to feel it for yourself. A lot of the reviewers are saying that is the case, but that's in the game Astro's Playroom, which is built specifically to show it off. Exactly, yeah. In a, in a, you know, a cookie-cutter game like Call of Duty, are you going to notice? Uh, well, on the topic of the IGN stuff, they're controller specific review is gave it a 9 out of 10 once again don't know how that compares presumably the Xbox controller should be like a middle a 5 or mm. if the default is the old one that's a 5 then maybe a 6 because it's slightly better but anyway uh, so the like the dual sense performance mode in games like Spider-Man there's you can get up to 120 frames per second or there's fidelity mode which is all your, your ray tracing and making it look pretty yeah. do you want to run run good or look good basically and that's one of the most sort of disappointing things at the moment for both systems is it seems to be a bit of one or the other on some games. Not all of them. Some can do both. But ideally, 60 FPS, 4K should be your standard. But evidently, it's it's not the case yet. I feel like it might be. It might get there because we are only just starting. Well, and, uh, I mean, I, saw, I watched. did you watch the uh, Digital Foundry comparison video? Where they, no, they, they, they compared Devil May Cry, right? And it's quite interesting. They can You can get... Um, 4K, like they both run a, a around an average 100 frames per second. 
Devil May Cry for the mo uh, most recent one. Five. Five. Um, at, at 4K, right? 100, 100 frames per second, which is great. As soon as you rack on the ray tracing, though, it, it, it's around 40 or 50 around mm -hmm. there. So you get in the 4K at high f um, refresh rates now. That's great. A um, bit of a problem with the um, variable refresh rate on the PlayStation because they don't support it. And that's something that um, they did know that was <laughs> a big issue. But other than that, yeah, it, it's a it's a huge leap up because they're not even upscaling 4K anymore like they used to. Yeah. Pretend, fake 4K like it was in the old, you know, it's actual 4K. Although yeah. as soon as you just whack on ray, tra ray tracing um, and have it in like the, the highest mode, it does take a performance step. If you're happy to pay at, play at um, yeah. 45, 50 frames a second, you can get the best looking version which is great um thing is ray tracing it's the new kind of favorite buzzword of, of the industry like 4k was it but i don't feel like people care as much because it, it's less special now because a lot of things can do it but now ray tracing is the the new yeah. the new kid on the playground so if eventually we'll probably get to a point where it's pretty standard across all like console games pc games you've been able to do it fucking ages like yeah <laughs> that's just by the by but the, in the console world for scrubs like me sure uh we're not there yet but i think we probably will be uh one thing they brought up as well which i th uh, thought was really telling and something you don't really consider but you should is how fucking loud the machine is because the ps4 is known for sounding like a jet engine but this one registered 44 decibels at 58 degrees while playing spider-man and i don't have any numbers for the uh PS4 in front of me, but 44 decibels is much, 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 much quieter than the. No, uh, that's that's inaudible. The, the that's basically yeah. inaudible. 44 it's decibels. A, it's a delicate and, sort uh, of harm. It's basically the the way it's designed. We look at we looked at the, at the tear down of the thing. It's like it's yeah. because it's so big that like the airflow system and and the way <laughs> the way that is designed. That's why it's so big, so you can't hear it and it doesn't get that hot. Yeah, I mean they they said they spent a lot of time, uh, you know, creating. This, these ways to keep keep it cool and keep it quiet and evidently they seem to have uh, been been quite successful uh so they're they're kind of closing remarks on it which again ref um is what everyone's saying pretty much is it why would sorry i'm, I'm fucking butchering the sentence <laughs> ign's quote here is pretty much what everyone is saying on the topic is that it's not a knockout punch yet like it's really great now mm -hmm. it's good but the lack of um powerhouse games yeah. not necessarily cross-gen stuff but like big powerhouse ones mean that it can't quite get all the way to its max potential and the incremental upgrades from having a ps4 to ps4 pro and now to ps4 5 P P ps4 5 huh? uh, ps5 mm -hmm. it doesn't feel as much of a big jump as it has done in perhaps past generations like two to three or three to four but I, that's not necessarily a bad thing i think a lot of people want to feel like it's going to completely knock their socks off when they buy it but if it still fundamentally is quite a bit better in a number of aspects. Yeah, I mean, we're, t we're talking, we're comparing the PS5, the new generation ones, with the mid-generation previous. Um, yes. So it's only been three or so years since the PlayStation 4 Pro and the Xbox One X. Um, uh, so in, t in terms of like a huge, like, a groundbreaking um, advancement it's not actually there but you know because we had the mid-generations this time so um yeah i mean i'm interested um in getting one i i'd, I'd get both if i could uh probably yeah, if i could afford them i'd have them yeah. um and it, it, the amount of people are post on twitter it's like yeah i pre-ordered both i'm like awesome like really good for you i do not uh, you know, disparage you at all. But how can you afford this? Like, yeah. It's a grand to drop all in one go. Yeah. Well, you don't actually need them both. And then though. games. You don't actually need no, them you both. Don't need them both. You only need the PlayStation because of um, Spider-Man at Spider -Man. the moment. That's it. Uh, and then yeah. and then you get in Horizon Zero Dawn at the end of next year. Mm. Is that Forbidden West or whatever it is? And uh, uh, God of War. Oh, well, no, th sorry. There is, um, there is Demon Souls as well. Yeah. Uh, which is a proper exclusive. That's not on anything else. Yeah. Uh, okay, moving on to the Xbox Series X uh, wing of the review. So IGN's one also gave it an 8. This one's from Ryan McCaffrey. Uh, the Xbox Series X is quiet, compact, laser-targeted games machine that should make 4K FPS gaming the world the, the wonderful new norm, but it currently lacks must-play games. And it's kind of what we've been, uh, we've been saying mm. throughout. Digital Foundry, a great console whose time is yet to come. I believe that in... Excuse me. 
I believe that in the Series X, Microsoft has indeed delivered an excellent next-gen system, but one that likely won't show its many strengths at launch. Game, and, <laughs> yeah. Game Informer gave it a B plus, and again, it's the same B+. sort of thing. Did it like, take the same test though? Did it take the same test? Did, did it? It was a different examiner, yeah, yeah. like it was a different reviewer. Exactly. So, are the questions the same on the same test? Uh, the Xbox Series X and Xbox Series S introduce superb quality of life improvements like quick resume and the reduced load times over Xbox One or even Xbox One X, but don't expect a markedly different or revolutionary leap forward when you first power on the system. Again, it's because that's probably going to come a bit later. Uh, which, I mean, that, for me, that's a reason enough to, to just wait. Mm -hmm. I'll just buy yep. one later if, if, I, if I want one and if it has good games, obviously. Uh, Polygon... The Xbox Series X looks like an Xbox One that swallowed a refrigerator and runs like an Xbox One that swallowed a Lambo. It's fast, sturdy, unobtrusive, its goals and capabilities encapsulated in its brutalist industrial design. That's, that's kind of a bit wishy-washy, games journalisty uh, bit there, mm -hmm. but uh, it runs well and it looks cool. Mm -hmm. like, and it'll look nice in your, in your TV. Okay, so now there's one from Digital Trends who... Did, he reviewed both the PS5 and the uh, the uh, Xbox. I think Chris Chris Morris, I think his name was. His is much lower. He gave it 3.5 stars. So by his personal metric, the uh, Xbox Series X is a whole star, one whole star lower than the uh, than the PS5. And he's got a, quite a, a nice analogy for it. Again, it's quite games journalisty, but I quite like it. It's a sports car with no gas. The Xbox Series X is like an athlete who spent the year practicing for the big game, only to find the rest of the team didn't show up. So it's good. It's, it's put the work in. Yeah. And it's there. But again, it's got no fucking games, which is going to be a could be a bit of a problem yeah. for a lot of people. I, I find it troubling that people say it's got no games. And I know it's a, it's a bit of an exaggeration. There are loads of games on both these systems. Mm. They just there's just not enough games to show it off. And I wonder yeah. whether if Cyberpunk was there at launch on both of these systems whether they'd be singing a different tune. Uh, because Perhaps. that game is, you know, it's going to be remarkable by all, by all metrics. And I can't wait for my PS4 to scream yeah. trying to play it and <laughs> crash every 10 seconds. Yeah. Uh, I, 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 I don't know. I, I, I just don't get rating this bit of hardware based on um, the software. I just don't get it. Rate the hardware, not the software. I, I don't know. But I don't feel like you can... You can rate the hardware without the software. And well, as there is software there. There's just no exclusive software. You see what I'm saying? There's Assassin's Creed Valhalla, yeah. there's Watch Dogs Legion, there's, there's games at launch, but there just isn't enough exclusive games. That's essentially what they're saying. And I don't think that's as, mu as much as a, of a disincentive as these people are making out. That's just my opinion. Maybe mm -hmm. I'm wrong. Well, fair enough. So... Uh the UI, start with that again, is virtually the same as the Xbox One. Same with the controller, which launched into a smooth native 4K amazingly quickly that the Series X justifies spending $500 to upgrade. So that that's IG, an IGN quote yeah. from uh, Ryan McCaffrey again. So he thinks the, the upgrade is justified, but the UI in the Xbox is very much in the same vein. As I said earlier, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. You can network transfer games again. And once again, who, I mean, if your internet can handle that, go right ahead but i've uh, also got smart delivery have you got notes on that but uh yeah i've got it somewhere i think it's further down so smart delivery that's an awesome the, feature that one so playstation's sort of doing it but they don't have their own word for mm. it and xbox is doing it harder and it's more kind of across the board yeah. so if you buy a game on current system on your xbox one you can free up upgrade for free to the the superior one when you eventually buy an xbox series x and i think xbox said that that's going to apply to every game they do uh all of their m numerous level they've got like 17 studios now mm. all of them are going to support smart delivery so buy it on current gen and uh you can go on to the next and that's right because, I, um, and and if you so sorry to interject if if you get sorry. um if you get the new system and you're installing you know the, the the system will automatically download and install the version of the game which is more is, is suitable for for your system um, which is great, and if there's a there's an upgrade, it will smart, you know, it will download and upgrade the game as per, you know, you don't have to worry about it. You'll always have the best version of the game for the console that you're using, and that's yeah. and that's just a piece of bit of peace of mind. Like you, you don't have to worry about that. I think it's an awesome feature. So I saw on Twitter yesterday, and I'm not entirely 100 percent on the facts, but it was someone saying, "Oh, I bought uh, Assassin's Creed Valhalla on." PS4, and then I, then I was like, oh well, I've got this Xbox Series X. I'll 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 buy it on that or whatever, or play it on that. 
and it's got set, um, cross saves, which I didn't know, which is great yeah. news. Um, cross saves is always a good thing. Every game should do it. But that made me wonder, because she didn't say was well, she bought it or anything. Can you? Will they support? cross-generation across different platforms so if you have it on ps4 how wonderful would it be if they let you buy the next gen well free upgrade to the next gen version on the opposite console so from ps4 to xbox series x mm. or uh xbox one to playstation 5 i'm not sure i think i don't imagine that would happen because I think that- it, it's a bit kind of yeah conflicting infrastructure and you know this that and the other but that that would be a dream. I don't know if it's that conflicting. I think if it works from PS5 to Series X, then it should work in theory between PS4 and. But yeah. um, I think it's all. Isn't it down to. Um, say if it's Assassin's Creed Valhalla, for example, down to Ubisoft supporting that more? I think so, yeah. yeah. I think it would be, it'd be their decision. Probably. I mean, maybe Microsoft and Sony could say, yo, don't do that because we want them to have to buy it on our bloody system. But in an ideal world, when you buy a game, you should fucking buy it once <laughs> and be able to play it on, uh, on any old thing yeah. that, that that's the dream um so they they also described it as looking cool when it stands up but like a giant misplaced lego piece when you put it on its side and you can't take off the stand which is so vertically it's at the bottom so if you turn it sideways it's there's just this sort of disc on the side which looks a bit shit but it d- definitely looks more suitable to a traditional um video game tv setup than the ps5 which is gaudy and, and loud uh, it's again really, really, really quiet. Forty decibels while playing Dirt Five at 4K and 60 FPS, but it's a last gen game. Yeah. So yeah, that's part of it. Versus 60 decibels on the Xbox One X, uh, 40, 42.5 degrees Celsius versus 50, 56 degrees on the Xbox One X. So again, it's quieter and cooler, which is always good. They normally go hand in hand. Um, uh, there's a bit about UI, but I've already said that. It's the same sort of thing. And personally, I f- fucking hate the Xbox UI. I don't really like the PlayStation one, but I tolerate it because I've been playing it for so long. And I actively dislike the Xbox yeah. one because I I go on it every now and then because I don't have a lot of games that I play on there. But if I want something from Game Pass or whatever, and I'm just like, oh, it's just so, so shit. It's slow and it's ugly. Presumably the Xbox Series One X... Uh, Xbox Series X1 is faster. Fuck these names. Why can't Microsoft <laughs> names things properly? It's fucking me up. Um, so in the settings, there's now a search function to make stuff easy to find. And it, that seems like such an obvious thing that I didn't even realize wasn't there, but it is now. Uh, and it, it, ma- it makes these consoles more like PCs, which is ultimately a good thing in that way. Because if you don't want to do that, you just don't have to. But it's more features for you. Yeah. The whole 12.1 teraflops thing, which is 20% better than PS5 on paper, it's you know they're, they're different strengths in different ways and they 60 60 fps 4k is posed to be the no, new normal but i doubt it will get there yet because of the lack of games that can really showcase it you know in the maximum possible way 120 fps is possible but you will have to sacrifice some resolution stuff and probably what you said about um devil may cry yeah and most tvs if you want 120 fps you're going to prob- probably need to upgrade your tv as well which i think a lot of people might um <clears throat> more casual people who aren't kind of clued up on that sort of shit they'll just see the highest number like awesome why does it look the fucking same it's because your tv needs to be better and you need to fork out for that i mean that well. is that's a big consideration if you can if you consider you know there are features being thrown around here like a lot of people some maybe not don't even have 4k yet so no, so yeah. talking about having oh 120 fps that's great yeah get my xbox or whatever throw it under it's like it doesn't look the same. it's it, it's a big consideration because it, it's like um uh the guy off unbox therapy said uh is that is that if you get if you go in for the all singing all dancing your console you have to consider what you're playing on because that's almost as important if you haven't got the screen to be able to complement the hardware it's really not worth the upgrade. So really consider carefully what what screen you're using to play these things on. So I've just quickly Googled, uh, although Google is being really fucking slow on me, uh, 120 hertz 4K TV. And the top answers, this is just from like the shopping thing in Google. It's not, not specific websites. You can get one from Very for £379, one from AO, I don't know what AO is, for £799, Argos three hundred and sixty nine ninety nine Curry's three hundred and seventy nine. And what uh, size Argos though? I again. mean, you, you need you need a decent yeah, exactly, size. Yeah, exactly. Like I'm, just, I'm just trying or... to give you. Yeah, yeah. I'm just trying to give you like ballparks. Yeah. So it, it, it's between kind of four hundred and looks like eight eight hundred one is fifty five. So 
they're not they're not completely unreasonable but again it, it comes down to a personal personal choice of your size and whether or not you can even fit it in your house because my tv certainly wouldn't i couldn't fit anything any bigger my tv's not even very good anyway um they also brought up a number of reviews also brought up the storage question because with the uh xbox series x it is one terabyte ssd again that sounds wonderful but apparently only 802 of it is usable and once again compare that to 825 versus 667 of the ps5 it's going to going to be a bit of a problem going forward because shortly that will just get filled up in in absolutely no time yeah. uh so the xbox series s the uh smaller less advanced version the kind only of halfway one. yeah the half step is only 364 gigs of usable space which is it's it's now this is pittance i mean i mean considering it's the digital only uh, console that's a huge oversight if you if you ask me mm. yeah they want to get to keep the price down but still um it's it's a problem it is a problem it's something else yeah. to consider if you're going to opt for that uh so buy it beware it's not so good but then there is the uh, the one terabyte expansion card which is the the same um infrastructure as the sx sx ss D. <laughs> fucking hell these letters are doing my XS- brain in x ssd right obviously yeah there you go much better but that's like 200 bucks 220 dollars something like that uh so that's a, another sort of investment you'll have to consider if you want to keep yeah. a lot of games in your system you could probably like if you again if you're sort of like casual level with like fifa and call of duty you can, you can fit them and that's probably it and you won't need anything else once again super fast load times that's all great uh it's go so i think IGN measured Final Fantasy 15 on Xbox Series X took 9 seconds versus on Xbox One X it took over 24 seconds so that's a quite significant increase so on and that, this was on their um, their video review and it cut out like they, they changed they cut it before the um, Xbox One X version loaded so I don't know how long it is it's just over 24 yeah uh, same with Gears 5 7 seconds on the XSX and again over 24 on the Xbox One X the quick resume feature now Again, PlayStation does something sort of similar, but they don't have a fancy name for it, and the Xbox version is kind of better. Uh, is this ability to pick up and play wherever you left off in like any recently played game? So you can boot up Red Dead Redemption Two, go, uh, you know, do what cowboys do, go f- get in a fight in a saloon and shoot some bandits, and then you can go and play Gears Five, play the entire game through, and then go back to red dead redemption 2 press the use with the quick resume function you'll jump immediately back into that very saloon yeah and that very situation so, which so is you're skipping the, the load up screens you're st- skipping the menu screens and you're sel- skipping yeah. the selection everything click the button into the game i think this That's so is good. amazing i think this is the best because one of the things that is <laughs> very scarce in my life is my time right and one of the main reasons why I, I i it just puts me off like even thinking about having a session it's like oh, i'm gonna have to sit there for five minutes while yeah. the game loads up and the boots up and nah fuck it. by the time i've i've done that i've contemplated doing something else and i've got something else on my to-do list that i've yeah. got to go and do but if you can just like press the button away you go Ugh. i mean this is gonna be um killer for social media i think because i know me and i'm sure a lot of other people in the middle of a load screen or like when you die you're respawn yeah. you're like oh, i'll just uh you know look at my phone look at dumb shit on on facebook or yeah. twitter or whatever without these load screens we're not going to have that, time and for it's, that. Gonna, it's gonna be great no time to run i won't have to look yeah. at this bullshit you seriously drastically reduce the amount of beer that you drink if you haven't got time to go to the fridge you know what i mean or I'll just have to invest in a mini fridge right beside me. Yeah. I'll, def- I'll just get fatter. I'll just get even fatter than I already have over the past nine months yeah. or however long. Would you get get an IV, uh, dr- a, 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 what do you call it, a catheter? Yeah. So you don't have to go for a piss either? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's yeah. it. Or, or just, oh, bed pan will do. I'll just uh, <laughs> pop that under and we'll, we'll be golden. Uh, one good thing about both consoles, but kind of in particular the Xbox One, no, the, what, what is this one, the Xbox Series X, is you can use old peripherals. You can use the old... Um, controllers, controllers yeah. so you can use four controllers on the DualShock 4 on the ps5 but obviously games that require the certain features of the 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 dual sense won't quite work like astro's playroom yeah isn't gonna um cooperate or is any 
any Xbox One controller, including the fancy pantsy Elite ones, should work on the Xbox Series X because they've made barely any changes because they are you, didn't feel like they needed. Are you to. sure that PlayStation Four controllers actually work on the PlayStation Five at all? I think so. I thought I thought I read that. Um, be, I might because be Unbox Therapy um, he stated that maybe he's wrong. Uh, it might, might look uh, need looking into, but he said that you need a PlayStation Five controller to be able to. Um, use on the PlayStation 5. You can't use PlayStation 4 controllers on the PlayStation 5. That's what he said. I mean, I don't quote quote me on that. I just... Uh, and he should know what he's talking about. He's got a pretty decent... Oh, yeah, here we go. Yeah, so I've just Googled PS4 controllers on PS5. Top answer in Google is from Games Radar. You can use a PS4 controller with PS5, but you can only use your PS4 pad to play PS4 games on PS5. So it's only no, PS4 yeah. games. No PS5 of, games. Right, makes sense. Which is... Well, okay, that's fine. Uh, it's it's a bit of a problem though. I mean, if you've got it's worth knowing. It's absolutely but, worth knowing. Yeah, like, if it, because if you've got to buy some new controllers if you yeah. want to if you want a multiplayer on um, on PS, yeah. PS5, these new uh, fancy expensive ones. There you go. So it's definitely um, something of note. And again, in general, it's the the Xbox Series X as a system is kind of let down by its power in the sense that there's no new games to really show it off. But as you say, everything that's currently out is going to run amazingly. Everything like cross-gen get cross cross platform games like assassin's creed or cyberpunk or whatever they're mm. all going to run better on the series x than they will on the ps5 just because in raw numbers it's going to run smoother ps5 will probably load a bit faster well in, really it's exactly you're looking it's actually, at a yeah, couple of seconds it, it, it's a it's a good time to be looking at digital foundry because they've just mm. released their first comparison and like i said it was the uh, devil may cry 5 and it does show that um, it, it, it flips and flops between the two consoles and it's, it's clear that PS5 is punching above its weight. Uh, that's the takeaway. Um, and the raw, number, the raw numbers and the hardware doesn't do it justice. You should watch the video for sure. Um, but the, uh, in, in the, uh, it, you've got frame rate mode, you've got uh, performance mode. And all, ugh, I, I mean, I don't know. In performance mode though, there is a significantly um, uh, outperform, you know, the Xbox outperforms the PlayStation 5, but it kind of flips back in the um, in the 4K mode, which is weird, which is what you'd not expect, which is why mm. it's it's going to be, it's going to be, they're kind of more neck and neck than anything. And that was the takeaway from the video. There, yeah. There's no clear, um, there's no clear um, more powerful uh, uh, console at this point based on yeah. this one game. This we, we don't know how future games are going to, fair on these on these two but if you're looking for something with the the most grunt power or the the best performance there is no clear out you know it, the, the the differences are indistinguishable it, there's there's no yeah. this you know it's it's in the indeci- undecided i don't i can't think of the word but it's yeah there's no winner yeah and i feel like i mean with the these performance versus resolution modes it'll come down to your personal preference in general but i also think depending on what game you're playing a game like um, I don't know a FromSoft game like Sekiro, where you need you know split second reactions. You're gonna want as many frames as you can get to give you as much of an advantage. But then, you know your slow walking simulators that just look pretty. It doesn't matter if you have any frame rate, a uh, really high frame rate, because you're not you're not gonna really use it. So you might as well stick it in resolution mode and get um, some really fancy visuals. Why not? Okay, so that's kind of all those reviews put together. Uh, they've both got good things and bad things both lack games so eventually they'll really really shine but to be fair that's kind of the situation with every launch now's the good one the good this review this is the Kotaku <laughs> one which is the most Kotaku thing ever I hope I haven't oversold it because I think it's hilarious you might not dig it as much as me PS5 review by staff writer Ian Walker it's so good Kata- so th- this is just before the conclusion they dropped this little the little little uh, little appetizer before they get to the meat of it. Kotaku staff joked about being able to use the detachable plastic plates as riot shields if the contentious US presidential election makes that a necessity. And then they go into the conclusion, but I'd be remi- so after singing the praise of the game in about 3000 words, I but I'd be remiss to ignore all the reasons not to be excited for the PlayStation 5. They mention uh, Foster's fever and the current youth, U- US healthcare system situation and how that can, can be very difficult for a lot of people. The presidential election and, again, quote, uh, a new old white man is sitting behind the resolute desk and uh, how people can't afford it because of, again, Foster's fever and you know, pe- a lot situation. of people are out of work, mm. which is very, very... It's tragic. It is tragic. But does that fucking belong in a PlayStation 5 review? <laughs> <laughs> 
exactly what you're on about. Uh, and then he ca- ca- carries on. That's not to say you can't be excited for those things. I certainly am on some level. But there's a... But there's an irrefutable level of privilege attached to the ability to simply tune out the world as it burns around you. I think the PS5 is a great machine, but it's tough to recommend when folks are literally fighting for their lives while residing in the richest country in the world. What the fuck are you talking about? That hurt my insides, that did. That right. hurts my I'll, inside. I'll, 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 try and defend, I'll try and defend him at first. Don't do it, Andy. In his defense, <laughs> I'm sure his heart is in the right place. Uh, he's trying he's to be nice. He's, he's trying, but it's that. so bad. Yeah, I, I don't. Yeah, right? Uh, I, I hate that word because it is thrown out so frivolously, just like SG, SJW yeah. and all that sort of junk. But then he's, exactly he's trying to make himself is. out to be cool amongst his peers by bringing this up because. Alana Pierce yep. said it in one of her things: is that um, is that all reviewers read their own, uh, read everyone else's reviews, and and they all get, you know yep. all friends and they're, they're pat each other. Yeah, on the back. Oh, and it's just this this the circle jerk of um, of <laughs> of, and you can see how uh, how this is going to be. Uh, who can think of the most intellectual <laughs> way to say the most simple thing? Nobody gives uh, a fuck, sir. Nobody like gives a fuck. Fucking- and like the the Wait, what makes the console is escape act- from all that bullshit going on in the world. Yeah, Don't tell us not yeah. to buy it because of all the shit. Come on, and get the fuck, get a grip, man. And as I was saying, in his defence, I'm sure he's this is coming from a good place, but it's so funny. But it almost almost offends me that he has the audacity to say something like this when he got it for free. Oh, he didn't have to fucking pay point. for it. <laughs> like, what the fuck are you talking about, man? Like uh, you you ha- have been. You are part of the privilege. You are. You are That's just dick, pure You're dickishness in there. It's just an like, absolute come dick. On. It's like yeah, it's hard like, to recommend uh, you know, a privilege of of buying one of these things when I, I actually got it for free. And there's all these other things that are more important in the world. Get over yourself, man. And there's a world Get outside over yourself. the world of America. You know, like there's shit happening everywhere. At all there's times. always been shit all happening the everywhere. Time. There's all wars the time. and genocide and all that sort of shit. You know, somewhere right now in the world. Like, oh, let's not buy anything. Let's not consume anything because no. there's more important things. We've got to sit here in our desperation and and in our utter sheer sadness. And just reflect on things, and just try and change like, the world with our words, in our reviews, in on Kata- on Kataku, because that's what will make a difference. No, and shut up. Like when he started <laughs> saying reasons not to buy it, I assumed he was going to go for something a bit more straightforward. Like uh, Sony uses There's not enough games. Uh, un- well, no. <laughs> I thought he was going to say Sony uses. Like child labor or right. unpaid labor in China or something—something something that you could actually say, which is a legitimate mm. criticism of them as a company uh, and how, how a lot of businesses um, produce things in China. I would understand that. Maybe you don't want to support that. It's still probably irrelevant to the a- uh, average person who's reading the review wants to know if it's fucking good machine or not. But at least that would perhaps have something. You're fucking talking out your ass, man. Yeah, he, um, he did have a. Um, he, he did. <laughs> He did talk a lot of shit, didn't he? What he did visit the toilet and came back with this fucking review. I mean, I tried. So when I was putting this together and finding out who wrote what and what their role is, I went to his Twitter to find out what position he was, and he's a staff writer. And his, I don't know if it's in response to perhaps some feedback he's been getting from this, <laughs> but his Twitter feed is currently Pri- restricted. Private, yeah. It is currently private. Wow. Um, so maybe. I mean, the, I think like the yeah. top comment on the article, I'll quickly uh, get it up with something like, yes, because I need politics in my fucking PS5 review or some shit like that. People don't want this. People don't need mm. this. You're not in a position to say this. You're not politically, you know, active or aware. I mean, maybe you are in the real world, but you're, you're fucking playing <laughs> video games, writing about the next generation of consoles. People want to know raw information. How fast is it? How good is it? What can I play on it? When's it coming out? How much is it? They're the basic facts. And if you're spewing this shit, what the fuck yeah. are you on about? And, and because we don't agree with him and because we're taking the mick out of him a little bit here, we in no way condone go into Twitter and, and, and oh, stalking yeah, Lee, these yeah. people. Don't 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 make out that we're, we're trying to do that or don't say that we're, um, you know, we're validating all that type of yeah. behaviour. Now we're just having a laugh between mates. We wouldn't go and harass people over it and, and try and make a reviewer's life a misery just because he's a bit of a dick. That's not worth it, man. We wouldn't do that. I'm not even sure he is. Like, he's I'm a sure dick. He's a, very he's a dick. 
He's a dick. No, I'm sure he's a very nice he's guy. He's a very nice dick. And he's... <laughs> I'm sure he is a very nice dick. He is... Insert male adult performer. I probably can't say the P word. He's, he's that guy. Johnny fucking Sins. He's a popular one because he, he, he's a brilliant meme. He's that. Right. There you go. I, I, does that round up our coverage of the... Yes, it consoles? does. Souls? He's a really fucking good hell. dick. Right. Let's move on. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> next up, we have um, the questions taken from the discord if you do want to join our community on the discord and get into the um get to ask us questions for the podcast next time head over to patreon.com forward slash pretty good gaming or you can click join if you're watching on youtube um uh, you can get early access to this podcast for a couple of days as well as get to ask us questions for the podcast and the satisfaction of knowing that you're supporting us we really couldn't do this without the support of the community so we really do appreciate everyone who takes the decision to support us and there have been two signups this week we've had bonsoir 85 pledge one dollar per month and we really appreciate every single dollar donated we wouldn't have to ask again if any everyone watching just donated one dollar we wouldn't have to ask we don't have to worry about google adsense uh youtube adsense we don't have to worry about anything we'd have no no one dollar a month that's it that all our, all, all our worries gone anyway we appreciate every single one of them and five dollars per month pledged by nomad I uh, appreciate your subscription or your support there, sir, too. Absolutely awesome. Let's move on to the questions then put to us by our paying supporters over on the Discord. And I think you're up first because it's the Metal Shark Quiz of the Week. And it's to, and go. it's going to be me in the hot seat this time. Okay. Even though last week's pilot show had a rocky launch, we landed the series. Yes. This is great. Uh, this is despite the production team messing up answers and the rebellious former host breaking ranks offered double points on questions. Well, uh, I mean, got 10 out of 10. What, what can, what can I do? I'm just the player. Uh, today's episode of Who Wants to Be a Gaming Know-It-All will be hosted by another, none other than Henry Cooper, with today's guest being Gaz from Denbyshire. Applause, applause. There we go. <laughs> so, you get... A couple of lifelines. Just anyone who didn't watch last week, it's, it's who wants to be a millionaire, but we're answering gaming questions and we get lifelines. It's 50-50, which will delete two of the answers and leave two remaining. Ask Henry so I can give my input. Uh, yeah. I'm not allowed to like look up anything. It's just kind of my a opinion. Th- oh, it's changed. It's a three-word three word Google, Google search. search. <sighs> three-word Google search. How okay. can that and be verified, though? Gaz carries it out. Gaz carries it out. Okay, fair enough. Okay. Uh, yeah, what if you just put more? <laughs> yeah. I'll just have to listen, listen to the tapping of your keyboard. Like, oh, no, no, no. That, that sounds like more than three words. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, which of the following games does not have at least one part set in Wales? The first one. So we've got four answers to choose from. Direct 4, The Black Mirror, Mountain Blade Ban- uh, Warband, not Bannerlord, Mountain Blade Warband, and Halo Reach. Which of the following games does not have a bit of set in Wales? I know it's Mountain Blade Warband because it's it's a total it's a total new continent. There's no Wales there. So that I'm assuming that Black Mirror, Direct 4, and the Halo Reach must have because Mountain Blade does not have whales in it. Guaranteed. Okay. The answer is Halo Reach. What? How was that? How was that? Fact check, please. I know. All right. All Metal right. Shock. We'll fact check it. I, he, got, he got like a name wrong last week, and I wouldn't be doing this otherwise. Uh, because I, 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 Metal Shock knows 99% of all the knowledge in all the world ever, right? But he got one name wrong. Okay, tell me what part of Wales is in Mountain Blade War- Warband. Uh, okay, so I googled Mountain Blade Warband Wales, and you're going to have to help me pronounce this. Kingdom of... Uh, G- Gwynedd? Gwynedd. Gwynedd. Gwynedd, oh right. It's G- G-W-Y-N-E-D-D. Apparently. Well, I'm, I'm, Apparently that's, I, I'm, that's there. I am um, My upset with myself. My instinct was to... My instinct was to go for Halo Reach, so you should have asked me, because Halo Reach is set on Reach exclusively. Reach is a planet. It, you don't go to Earth at all. Um, Viking In the Vikings. Kingdom of blah blah is uh, one of the 21 factions in Viking Conquest and the largest Welsh kingdom. So there you go. Vi- in Vikings Conquest. Wow. Wow. That's such a difficult... You were getting easy ones to start last week. I'm... I'm a... Really I'm did. a... Oh... <laughs> I, what, what is Viking Conquest? Is it, oh, it's an expansion. Did you play the expansion? Mm, that's the problem, see? That's the problem. I played Warband. But, um, oh, but if you didn't play the expansion. 
I mean, that that's your fault, really. You should play 100% I'm, of every single I'm, game yeah, just I'm in going, case yeah. we get a question. Ugh, it's the only one I knew, and I thought I was double thinking myself because I know Metal Shark knows which games we like, and so he sets mm. his questions based on. So I I thought it was a, it was a layup first one. I thought it was easy, and I got nailed in the gut on the first one. Oh, I'm I'm devoted. It's, it's like a stake to my heart that one, Metal Shark. <laughs> okay, well, hopefully you'll redeem hinting, yourself with the next one. Am I hinting one. for qu- easy questions next time? Is, is that another hint? <laughs> which of the following is not? Which of the following is not an official Joy-Con color? So Joy Cons are on your Switch. Yeah. Neon orange, neon green, black or grey? Um, neon orange, neon green, black or grey? Orange is green is grey is so black isn't. That's the answer I would have gone for. So let's have a look and correct it. See, is that was easy, man. That was easy. <laughs> how? how uh, I don't know. Maybe maybe I'm just being stupid on a first question. Maybe it's my fault. Uh, maybe maybe it's me. Yeah, maybe, maybe. It's not you, it's me. So you got one, one out of two. Which of the following is not a genuine Tomb Raider game title? Ah, uh, what? Which of the following is not a genuine Tomb Raider game title? Not Raider title. Tomb Raider, The Angel of Darkness, Lara Croft, Relic Run, Tomb Raider, Curse of the Sword, and Lara Croft, Cross Manor Design. What? How am I supposed to know this? I don't, I've, I've not played one single Tomb Raider game. Uh, Angel of Darkness sounds... Um, I'm going to go with... You do have all three lifelines, just as a reminder. Yeah, I do, don't I? But then again, I don't know what's coming up. Um, I'm going to... Mm. I'm, I can't do a three Google word search for this either, either. so that's out of the question. Well, wait, with regards to the Google search, we need to establish... Oh, yeah, I could do Lara Croft games. Oh, yeah, I could do Lara yeah, Croft games. Yeah, and then you can just look at the list and find the one that's not there. Are we allowed to click on things? Of course or is it we just are. Yeah, yeah, shows yeah, yeah, up yeah, yeah. At the of course we are. Okay. Go down a rabbit hole of clicks and find what you need. Um, yeah. I'm going to go 50-50. 50-50. And then... Uh, so 50-50 leaves answer C Tomb Raider Curse of the Sword or answer D Lara it's Croft now. Cross Manor Cross Designer Cross Manor Designer has to be Cross Manor Designer right okay correct it is Lara Croft Cross See, Manor Relic, Relic Run sounds like a, a mobile game like a yeah like, um, a, a infinite yeah, runner one of those game. games uh, Angel of Darkness sounds like a game Curse of the Sword yeah it's pretty obvious now Now I think about it Cross Manor Designer Not, well, yeah, that's not going to be. Well, good. Everyone's got to have a hobby. Well, maybe it's of, an um, expansion. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> maybe. <laughs> All right. So that's what two out of three. Two out of three. Next up, which game is the following line from? You have died of dysentery. So which game says you have died of dysentery? Fallout, the original. Wasteland, the original. Oregon Trail or Crusader Kings Three? That I'm leaning strongly towards Crusader Kings Three. Um, you've died of dysentery. Yeah, you have died of dysentery. Yeah, because yeah, you can definitely die of dysentery in Crusader Thing Kings Three, so I'm going to go with that. Sounds reasonable. Oh no, it's Oregon Trail. How am I supposed to know about Oregon Trail, Metal Shot? I mean, I, I I guess he doesn't know all the games we've played. Um, I, I'm I'm the, the the point here is that I'm I'm losing so badly that I'm blaming other people, and that's a trait of mine. You'll you'll you'll. You'll 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 see that whenever something goes wrong, it's initially not my fault, and then I come to my senses and realise it is me. So apologies, Metal Shock. I know it puts a lot of effort. <laughs> it's not you. It's definitely me being stupid. Uh, I, I can second that. It is. Although to be, did I, you know I that? No idea on that one. Not I, at all. Uh, not at all. I, not I swear he stitched I, me I up this gone, week, though. I would have gone Crusader Kings as well. I would have gone Crusader Kings as well. Uh, okay, next one. So that's what two out of four. Two out of four. Fifty percent. What country is Vega from Street Fighter 2 meant to come from? Portugal, Spain, Italy, or Romania? Oh. Are we allowed to check which one Vega is? Vega's or... the one, uh, it's the tall one. Is he the blue He's one? He's the tall one. I'm. Oh, I'm going to have a look which one Vega is. I'm, I'm saying to. it's Spain or Portugal. It's Spain or Portugal. I wish I had another 50 50. Um... Oh, well, this is not the character who I thought it was. Spain or Portugal, you reckon? I'm going to opt for... I thought it was... Uh, uh, is it Portugal? Um, 
I'm going to say it's Spain. That's my gut feeling. Spain, yeah? yeah? That's my gut feeling. It's Spain. Fine, fine I, Yeah, why not? <laughs> Correct. It is Spain. Get in there. Boom. Get in. See, I'm not That's... stupid. Who said I was stupid? I don't even play Street Fighter. Yeah, there you go. Uh, three out of five. Three out of five. Right, you can still redeem yourself. Which of the following games can actually be completed? Duck Hunt North American Edition on the NES... Dig Dug for the arcade, Gran Turismo 2 North America edition for the PS2, or Halo 2 Japanese edition. So one of these well, only can one be can completed. be completed, and three of them cannot. So that could be because they're endless games, kind of like uh, like a Minecraft or something. You don't that doesn't really end. You just kind of play it forever. Or it could be because of a bug or a problem. Yeah, I'm going to. Um I'm going to use all the guile and nous that I've got available to me um, based on the the answer being a certain size in in, in a blank on the mm. screen. Um, it's a cheeky it, way to do it, but it works. Oh, so, oh so you know this, this signal, do you? Yeah. Yep. For, the, this answer is a certain size, and that can only mean, I mean it can only be B or D, which is Dig Dug for Arcade or Halo 2. So I can... I can literally get a 50-50 here for free. Um, what what Metal Shock has to do is add a load of exclamations yeah. at the end of the that's answer. Yeah, that's to what make I was going to say. Well, I wasn't going to say it because it was my uh, secret yeah, for next so time. May, maybe it'll be harder for you next. Maybe you won't get 10 out of 10 yeah. next week. Um, I'm just being shown up because you got such a good score last week. I think <clears throat> Hello 2 Japanese Edition or Dig Dug for the Arcade, one of those two. The Arcade cannot be an incompletable. So does it have to be a dig dig dug? Um, I'm going with dig dug. Dig dug. You have to be able to complete an arcade game, right? It's not dig ah. dug. It's Halo Two Japanese Edition. Ah. Can we can we find out why? Can we find out why? Well, that's uh, completable. Well, the other three aren't. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. That's the wording of the question. Yeah. Yeah, that's weird. Yeah. Anyway, it's three out of six, right? <laughs> Okay, number seven. What was Sonya's fatality move in the original Mortal Didn't Kombat? Mortal okay, Kombat. So this is going to be another tr tricky mm. one. A fiery blown kiss of death, kicking their Ooh. head off, kiss that would cause them to swell and explode, or sonic waves that would shake them to dust. Did you play Mortal Kombat? Uh, one of them. One of the, I think the most recent I one. I think kicking her head off is... Which one's Sonya? Oh, I don't know. It's one of the top two because that's the shortest answers and it's a short answer <laughs> again. And by default, I'm getting a, a free 50 50. Oh, I know who this is. Kiss of Death. Okay. Kiss of Death is definitely in it, but is it Sonya? Kicking the head off. I'm pretty sure that is in it too. Sonya's fatality move. I can, I can, I can mm. Google that. And it's the original one. It's the original one. Um, yeah. Uh, so Sonya Fatality original uh, do I, do I save with. it though do I save my, my Google search and well, we got three more after this no what, four more four more after this no I'm just going to go with and I know because death is in there but Blown a Kiss is in there I'm not sure whether kicking the heads off is it just rang a bell to begin with but I know Kiss of Death is definitely one so I'm going to go with Kiss of Death and I just let the chips fall and so be it okay let's have a look it is a fiery blown kiss of death. Wow, that was close. Amazing. So that's uh, four, four out of seven, I think. Four out of seven. Okay, okay. Glad you didn't ask me because I would have gone kicking the head yeah. off. Okay. Um, okay. What is the title of the most popular pretty good gaming YouTube video starring Henry Cooper? Oh. I think I know this one. Uh, CD Projekt CEO kills it at Investor Conference Call. Has EVE Online just screwed all its players? NBA 2K21 hikes up the price on next gen. UK government loot boxes are, are gambling. Fallout TV series. And then, so that was all one. Yeah. The next one. New Xbox model leaks. Avengers version slash Verizon exclusive skins. Suicide Squad game by Arkham Devs. So you've got two daily triples and then two kind of um, dedicated videos. The dedicated videos by far um, do better. I, I'm going back off. Um, I, I don't know for certain, but with my knowledge of how the algorithm works on YouTube, Eve does really well, but we've got 
um, because we've uh, the channel's had a, a, a huge Eve one in the past. However, CD Projekt is is the winner, right? Because CD Projekt is, especially with the all caps and the first four letters, CD Projekt CO kills it. That's all caps. That's going to work really well. Um, and I, I'm pretty. Sh- we did a um, we did a um, conversation for that one, didn't we? It was a discussion one. I'm pretty sure that's the one because um, because of. I don't know. It's just a hunch because of my knowledge of, of the, <laughs> of the algorithm. It's either that or Eve Online for sure. But it's got. I'm going to go with CD Projekt. CEO kills it. You make a good case, and the answer is CD Projekt kills it. Well, CD Projekt CEO kills it. Not saying <laughs> just kill yeah. kill him. At, uh, investors conference call. Yes, awesome. Uh, that that is what I would have gone with because I'm pretty sure that is um, the highest performing one that I am featured. Cool. Uh, so that's five out of eight yeah I've got two lifelines left so here we go here we go I'm doing you, it right you, now I'm doing you, it right now you, you got it okay which game for the Xbox Series X has not yet confirmed a free 120 FPS upgrade Destiny 2 Devil May Cry 5 Dirt 5 or Gears 5 excuse me a sec give me camera one second please right uh, so which one has not had a 120 FPS free upgrade confirmed? So Gears 5 has to, because it's uh, Microsoft. Dirt 5, mm, maybe. Devil May, Cry, Dev, Devil May Cry 5, a free. We're talking free, right? We're talking free. Devil May Cry, yep. Cry 5. Um, Devil May Cry. Devil May Cry 5. It's funny because Digital Foundry were playing. 120 FPS Devil May Cry 5 on the Xbox Series X in mm. the video. So I watched that. Whether it was a free upgrade or not is another question. Destiny 2 is probably going to be my answer. Dirt, Dirt 5, I just don't... I, I'm asking you, Henry. I'm going to ask you. You're going to ask yeah. me? Um, Do you so know? The, Got any ideas? I agree with you. The Gears 5 is probably good to go because it's a Microsoft game. You said about Devil May Cry 5 and Digital Foundry. Yeah, that's probably... All, Good to go with the 20 F- 120 FPS. Dirt 5, I saw with uh, the IGN Xbox thingy, and they said that it could do 120, yeah. but you'd sacrifice some resolution, and I haven't seen anything about Destiny, so that would be the one I would go for. Okay, we're going to go for Destiny, and if it's wrong, we're blaming you. Very fair. The answer is Devil May Cry you 5. You are joking. The rest are offering 120 FPS upgrades for free. Well, goes to show, didn't it? And what, what do I know? What does mm, digital foundry know? Well, perhaps, perhaps it's Devil May Cry 5 Standard Edition can't do it, but maybe the the Special Edition can, because they're like reselling that as yeah. the next gen version. Yeah, uh, May, maybe that's what it, I, is. I, I it has to be that, right? That's got to be it. Ugh. Okay, so uh, what? I can't, I can't remember what you're on now. Five out of eight, nine. Five, five out of nine. <laughs> oh, golly. Come on. You've got to break even. Which game holds the world record for the longest cutscene in a video game? Oh, God. Quantum Break, Metal Gear Solid 4, Detroit Become Human, or Death Stranding? Uh, I, I, I've got a hunch it's Metal Gear Solid 4 because at the end of the game, it's not like an hour or whatever. Metal Gear Solid. But I'm going, I'm going to Google longest video game very good scene okay longest very good video game cut scene there we go yeah cut scenes one word you're fine uh metal gear solid 4 it says world record uh 71 minutes yeah because it's like an hour at the end i'm I'm pretty sure people have told me that in the past so that's i kind of knew that anyway so it's a shame that i had to waste my uh thing on there but i'm gonna say metal gear solid 4 and the answer is Metal Gear Solid 4 at 71 minutes of uninterrupted cutscenes. You are absolutely right. Six. I mean, it wasn't I mean, that bad. It started bad. It was <laughs> over half. It's, you're, it's still not it over as half, highly man. rated as the Xbox Series X by IGN, but so be I'm, it. I'm not, I'm not shit. I'm not amazing. I'm pretty good. I got pretty six, good. Out of, six out of ten. No, nah, nah, seven's pretty good. You ain't no, pretty six, good. six slash seven's pretty good. What is six then? Well, you're not, you're not, you're not slash seven. You're just six. <laughs> well, what's six then? If seven's pretty good, it's I. It's I. I gaming isn't. Has got a ring to it though, sir. So. No, it doesn't, does it? <laughs> I. Oh, I saw. Uh, 
saw uh, one of the the classic uh, dickhead comments the other day, um, which was pretty dumb gaming. Oh, oh that was one oh, of my ones I was going to read. A good one. <laughs> yeah, pretty oh, dumb it? gaming. Oh, no. Lol. I mean, yeah, uh, like we haven't heard that like a million times. Pretty dumb. I mean, uh, pretty uh, creative. Pretty great. Anywho, comment. right. So let's move on to the the rest of the questions because I feel like we've been chatting for ages. Yeah, already. we certainly have. That was that was excruciating quiz for me but thanks as always to Metal Shark for the quiz mm, and try and make him harder for, for Henry next week or am I in the hot seat again because I did so shit uh, <laughs> and if I am in the hot seat don't don't try and make the the answers like longer so I can't I can't deduce from the size of it which one of the questions it is uh, because that would just be harsh on me now the, the answers have to all be the same amount of characters that's that's the rule well, no you can have you can have the answers whatever length but just just oh, the one yeah. that you've blanked out you've got to make that yeah. a bit longer yeah, yeah. so we can't kind of uh, measure them all up <laughs> anyway uh well let's move on to the other questions from the um the community so tons has the first one and it reads as follows okay we have had quite a lot of what is your favorite game variations so i thought this would be fun if you wanted to punish someone you don't like what game would you let them play until they break down crying? Must be a real game, not a ROM hack or a Flash game. What game would you make them play until they break what down? Not, Depends what? what friend it is, right? <laughs> well, uh, but yeah, punish, so it's not a friend. It's puni- if you want to punish someone. Um, I, I I, mean, this this might sound a bit silly, but I don't play bad games. Uh, but but you're not, like, you don't choose to play a game you don't like so i don't have that broad of a repertoire of games that i torture people with but the most obvious answer would be something like really hard like a dark souls yeah. or something like that but like on a am i allowed to stipulate that it can be on like a really really shit system so the frame rate's dog <laughs> and it's full of bugs the original original xbox yeah. pre-patch you know go even go uh, go demon souls because that's probably going to be jankier yeah. the original demon Souls. if we were punishing each other then we choose that for certain but for a lot of people mm, like true. those games right so you can't really uh, yeah none of my friends do um games which are just excruciatingly bad yeah we don't don't play any bad games um none of them can think of i just use something like i don't know an ea sports game mm. just like uh madden or nfl something like that i don't know Something that there's loads of microtransactions in, like a premium game. Or find something which is going to offend someone, like if they're a, if they're an enormous, I don't know, like massive homophobe, put Last of Us in front of them, <laughs> or if, if they're Russian, make them play that Call of Duty one where they changed history and made America look like the better, the the heroes of it when yeah. in reality it was Russia who did it. I can't remember whatever. Yeah, find something that they will find fundamentally offensive. Thanks for the question, sons. Uh, okay, next one is from Angry Hobbit. More cyberpunk questions this week. What unusual or original feature would you like to see the game include or even implement in a later patch? Personally, I'd love to see the seasons change in Night City. Snowy winter, so other than the visual aesthetics, your car would slip on the icy patches. Summer could see the Badlands go more sparse. Perhaps wildfires could spread around. Or maybe go the other way and make a seasonal beach party area with a quest line. Good. I quite like that yeah. idea. I quite like snowy Night City. It could be pretty cool. But my main one, I, I, I do have a, a feeling that they might do it because they were thinking of it originally, is like a third-person mode or yeah. a third-person cutscenes or whatever because we've seen it go the opposite way with like GTA implementing first-person. So I don't see why they could put that back. I feel like this is... Because they've had to cut a number of different features. Yeah. If, I mean, I'd go with... Reasonable to assume that they might try and put some of them back in after lunch. I'd go with flying cars. Like mm, flying cars, cars, yeah. Cars that you can fly yourself obviously or, cu- or customizable cars because they took that out oh, as well really? i think well i think you can they, they have paint jobs but like i don't think you can change it or upgrade them or anything yeah i'm Something fine like with that, that. i'm remember. fine with that anyway thanks for the question mr angry hobbit we're all getting more excited it's only months ago until cyberpunk until my 40th birthday it's supposed to be only five days but uh it's a little longer yeah, let's now. not dwell on that it's, it's coming out on my birthday so that, that's that's good enough for me oh yeah it's definitely coming out there definitely not definitely coming out again. my birthday i'll, I'll stake my life on it <laughs> <laughs> oh dear yeah. that's on camera yeah, that's now <laughs> it, uh, I'm doomed um, next up Cloney again oh no it's his first one how do you feel about villains in recent games I have skipped out on a lot of games that and didn't play a lot of single player but partly because I'm 
dumb and cling to some MO, MMORPGs that I play since childhood, partly because they don't grab me. But the older I get, the more I realise that many games out there, single player experiences and especially fancy games, have very tropey villains with single minded motivations. Don't get me started, man. You actually hit the nail on the head there. Uh, he carries on. Sauron wants to destroy everything. Deathwing is mad and wants to reign in the rule of the old gods. Cthulhu, basically. Um, CTOS and the company behind it want ultimate control and power. And even the enemies in games like Ghost of Tsushima have one goal. To destroy you and end your way of life. Where are the compassionate villains? Did I just play the wrong games or did you notice similar trends? I understand that this is due to mainstream appeal, but it's easy to hate a villain who has a clear motivation, but I kind of miss to live through a story with ups and downs instead of just upgrading my armor until I'm ready to beat the boss from it, the intro sequence. I, I, I understand what you mean. It's, it's more about, it's like the appeal and um, movies and TV shows are exactly the same for me. If the motivation of the villain it's just simply kill everything, own everything. <clears throat> um, then I just don't engage. I need to feel... It's like it's got Game of Thrones did it for me. Like, it's that Jamie Lannister thing, mm. right? Jamie Lannister is the biggest bastard to begin with. And then, like, four seasons in, they did the old fl- um, switcheroo, and you want the guy to not die. And it's like, how, how did they do that? Like, he was the biggest arsehole in the whole thing. Yeah. And now I'm rooting for this guy with the one hand. Um, so it's weird. Uh, but that's what I want that's what I want and that's why I didn't yeah. like Mass Effect Andromeda right because they're just like big grunts like rrr, rrr, I just want to just want to you don't come on our planet I'll just kill you and then you just kill them no they're trying to kill you so you kill them don't worry about them we'll kill them and while we're killing them oh there's someone else of, of our team who's just died and it's like that whole like this I don't know what they call it there's, um, there's a term for it in it where they just run around killing everyone it's like Last of Us 2 had it naked J- Jakey Naked Jakey, the guy with the ball. What, he uh, did the Ludo narrative dissonance. That's that exactly what I'm for? thinking. Ludo narrative yeah. dissonance. Uh, that that that's where the best your, YouTube... your gameplay is different to how your characters behave in cutscenes. Exactly. Yeah. Um, is it Naked Jakey? That is the best YouTuber yeah. in. On I've really got he's, he's amazing. He's so good. So good. He breaks down every every reason why. Um, yeah. I, I mean, kind of like that. Yeah. I get it. Although, I think. Of all the things we can criticize Last of Us 2 for, it's not that we don't, that they're not trying to make us <laughs> understand the villain in that. Um, I think. Well, I think a, a, a really good example of a good quote unquote villain would be Joel in the first one, because an argument could very easily be made that he is the villain of the story. I mean, you could very easily argue against it, but I think for that reason, that makes him so good. Yeah. You know that, what I mean? That's kind of true. But, in recent memory, uh, the best video game villain who is an actual villain who does you know villainous things has to be at least in my opinion Dutch from Red Dead Two. Yeah, because he's a a guy who you, you you watch him make terrible decision after terrible decision, but he's got a plan. I've got a plan, and you want it, you you want him to kind of snap out of it because there is a good man somewhere in there. He's just incredibly greedy and uh, self serving. But uh, on, touching on Sauron there, Sauron's one that I, I am mixed about because Sauron is very kind of one-dimensional, but that's because he's not really meant to be a proper character. He's meant... Because it, it's an older story, obviously. It's from, what is it, like the 30s? The Lord of the Rings, I think? Um, he's he's more of a metaphor than anything. Like, he's not meant to be an actual character. So I think yeah. treating him as such is perhaps a disservice to the point, but... As a character, he is a bad character, but he's kind of not supposed to be. He's meant to be yeah. a metaphor for like all evil in the hearts of men and this corrupting influence and and, and war and how it all it, it's all the worst thing in the world. But yeah, I just want um, I just want all our villains and bad guys to have a good reason for being a bad shitty person. Uh, yep. So long as they can justify being the bad shitty person, I'm happy. If the, if there's no justification for it, if it's just pure greed or pure like evil it's like nobody believes that that's not that's not a mm. human trait right nobody's very few people are pure evil like most people are doing things to try and get something from it so tell me what that it's thing one, is it's one of my biggest problems with assassin's creed valhalla at the moment is there isn't really a villain like the some of the marketing material and the interviews and stuff would have you believe it's um king alfred yeah. it's not like he i've seen him once uh, uh he he shows up I won't spoil spoil anything, but he shows up and then he disappears again, like within within the same scene. I haven't 
I don't have any long-standing beef with yeah. him. Like, at the beginning, you've got this kind of clan rivalry with other people, but that's not... That's nowhere near the focus. It's barely see, it's barely even a side quest by the end. Um, so they doesn't really have a villain because it, they're focusing on, like, your community and shit, but that's not so good. But just as a little little tidbit on Assassin's Creed... Any Anywho, who, thanks for the question, Cloney. This is the... Yeah, thank you very much. This is the final question from Tommy T. In regards to game reviews, why do you think games like Call of Duty don't get called generic and get decent reviews re- reviews and scores, even though it's recycled content year by year and comes buggy as shit and takes a year to get to where it should have been at launch? However, games like Days Gone, open world with a twist, get called generic and reviewers tend to shit on them. Thanks for the quality content and a grinning face. Um, so Call of Duty. I mean, it's the it's the age old meme, isn't it? They always get reasonable uh, reviews. Let's let's just for um, argument's sake, let's get them up. What's the most recent one? Warzone. Wait, is the new one out yet? <laughs> A lot of questions. I don't know the answer to there, Henry. Oh, I don't fucking know. All right, let's go. Call of <laughs> Duty. Only three three in words. Metacritic. <laughs> Call of Duty. Black Ops Four. PS Four has eighty three. Warzone PS4 has 79, so that's not as good, but it's still reasonable. Uh, Modern Warfare 80 on PS4, Black Ops 3 81. I mean, that, World War Two highly 79. rated, whatever you you think. You know, uh, they well rated games. Them, so I, I think yeah, this is certainly not not terrible. I think there's there's a lot there's a lot to be said about games, the state of games reviewing, right? And and Days Gone is a good example. Because mm. that is a game that we both really liked, and a lot of the criticisms of that was doesn't bring anything new to the table. Um, it it do- doesn't. You're right there. Uh, no, mm. I'm listening. I'm just getting my Days Gone hat to represent. Oh right, I was, I was like, what's he doing there? Is he taking a delivery of a curry or something? Um, <laughs> Days Gone hat. Day, I mean, we really liked it. We, we liked the protagonist. We liked the world. We liked what you had to do. And um, but then again, it hits so many. Um, you know. For example, you, you're playing a gruff male, and again, and like uh, I have a female gruff white male exactly, protagonist, a, fe- or whatever a female, the guy said. yeah, a female reviewers, or people who are virtue signaling reviewers who we've also talked about them already today. Um, they're going to be um, bringing up issues with the game based on who the protagonist is, and not, and it's like uh, really, it's it's all about review integrity, right? Call of Duty say is it the same again every every single year? Pretty much. I mean, there's not that. They, are they good games? Maybe. Uh, are, are they the eight out of ten, nine out of ten games? Probably not by my. Uh, but they pay some advertising revenue. Do you know what I mean? They give you early access. I I don't know. I'm just, <laughs> maybe I'm intimating mm-hmm. that um, that IGN gets a lot of um, revenue for on their website for. Um, these games with big uh, big budget marketing uh, I, I don't know maybe that's the cynic in me maybe that's just complete bollocks well, I think, but I think it's lots to do with um, review re- just the reviewers themselves being being got this peer group and they want to try and impress other people by by bringing up irrelevant things completely relevant and we had the, the main uh, example earlier with the Xbox <laughs> the xbox situation you can't buy this game because of uh because of trump essentially because of trump yeah, yeah. don't buy the, don't buy this uh console because of trump that's why well uh, the thing is he even brought up at the, at the time of writing it looks like biden's gonna get in it's like well what you're bitching about that's that's the bloke <laughs> you want like uh, any, anyway we're past yeah. that um i think the review situation yeah you're, you're absolutely right there's a lot of like dick sucking and whatnot that goes on but I think a lot of it for these bigger outlets like your IGNs and whatever, the Call of Duty review will go to the uh, Call of Duty like fan. We're coming at this That's from true. non-fans. We don't like Call of Duty because of the exact reasons you've listed. Generic, doesn't do anything, doesn't bring anything new to the table, all of that shit. But the person reviewing it, that's their bread and butter. And at their, at their very like core, the base level, they are very pretty games with very high production value. Yeah. So I think that kind of helps make a game perhaps seem better than it is i think any most people can can agree to that and mechanically you you say bugs which yeah totally right but mechanically they're normally pretty sound like the call of duty games do largely have very good shooting and and base mechanics so on that level that's like a good game you know what i mean like to be a functional game that works and you can play and you can you do what you're supposed to do and i think in that way it is a good game but you're absolutely right. They get these re- much better review scores, and they don't get 
they don't get as much heat as another game would like if you took call of duty off the box it would probably get bare like some serious abuse from some of these reviewers but it's just a shitty situation uh, i mean i always i always take out through the reviews and find a reviewer yep. who you, who uh, resonates with you and and find pick mm-hmm. out the points in the review that you identify with too don't just you know re- don't look at the number the number means objectively shit. most exactly. reviewers don't like it uh, reviews I in general so I don't do nothing them. Reviews mean nothing. Find someone you trust, whose opinion you trust, whose opinion you ally, uh, align with, and l- listen to what they say about it. Yeah. And it's important to consider biases. And I don't mean get rid of them, because every reviewer has bias. Like, if I reviewed a Call of Duty game, as I said, I'd come at it from the perspective of someone who doesn't like Call of Duty. That's yeah. my bias. And that's it's, it's your responsibility to kind of tell people that. Yeah, and influence too. So, so if you've been treated well by, you know, by by Activision or you've been wined and dined or whatever you've got to disclose that like yeah and that mm-hmm. and that has to be part of what you how you talk about the game it's like yeah they treated me well they're nice people I know the people who worked on this game because I spoke to them um, and yeah. therefore that has to you know that's got to have influenced what I'm going to say about this game anyway it's a tricky one anywho that's it for the questions this week thanks to everybody as always for asking your questions um, on the Discord, if you want to get access to ask us questions for the next week's podcast and get your get a shout out at the beginning of this section, head over to patreon.com forward slash pretty good gaming or just join on YouTube as a member. And now it's time to move on to we don't have a triggered fanboy this week, so we're going to do the dumbass dipshit of the week. Right, Henry, do you have the dumbass dipshit comment of the week? I do. It's just that Google is struggling to load for me. Okay, so. Assassin's Creed Valhalla launched uh, two days ago at the time of recording, but I got an early review thingy from Ubisoft and I've been playing it all of last week. It's basically taken up all of my time when I'm not um, working, much to my uh, girlfriend, girlfriend's displeasure. She, keep, she keeps getting annoyed that she can't watch fucking Bake Off or Strictly Come Dancing or whatever. Um, so, but I haven't. I hadn't finished it by the time I the embargo went up. So rather than doing a full review, and I fucking stressed multiple times in the video this is not a review I said at the beginning and at the end and in the description and as the pinned comment it's not a review it's impressions that's why it was very casual i was even on camera and not on a podcast it was a miracle but obviously a couple of people that they still get upset but this person was the best example of it because he kind of shoots himself in the foot in his own comment uh so this is from p ramirez lol it looks like someone went to bed with ubi fost i don't know who ubi fost is <laughs> but uh okay these guys are losing edge they have review to ubisoft in less than a month i wonder if ubi sent them a good check and also check is uh spelled incorrectly so that we've been accused of paid reviews because we i've played two ubisoft games or sent two ubisoft games within the space of a month what you're failing to realize which was very um clearly pointed out by some of the commenters who i might read in a minute because uh some of those are quite funny one of them is quite long, though. Uh, is they released two games within a month. Watch Dogs came out on the 29th, I think. Yeah. And the embargo was on the 26th. So I published my review on, I think, the following Monday because I was away or some shit like that. But yeah, recent recently. Valhalla came out on the 10th. Embargo was on the 9th, I think. Yeah. Well, Monday, whenever Monday was. And I played it the week before. That, that's within, within a 28-day period my camera has stopped rolling okay there we go back yeah that's within a 28 day period and you're also missing the fact perhaps you didn't watch actually watch my watchdogs you one didn't. because i tore i kind of tore its asshole out a little bit i said that it was pretty shit mm. like it doesn't do anything interesting with its unique mechanic and it runs like garbage and once again i've said it 100 times it crashed seven times yeah seven fucking times uh, what what he and, yeah. he what he fails <clears throat> to understand here is that reviewing a game is not an endorsement, and I think that's where his no. problem is. Right, he thinks that we've reviewed these two games, we're endorsing them. No, we're not. What we're doing is we're giving our opinion on this game, which 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 are big games. Right, let's be let's be honest. A lot of people want to know about these games. Mm. We're informing our viewership what we think about these games or what Henry and we we didn't ask we didn't ask for it they offered it 
Oh, we would have, we would have asked like. for it. We'd have taken it anyway because it's it's it, I probably would because not only not yeah. only is it good for the channel because it gets a lot of people watching mm. the video. It's good for the viewers because it ge it gives them information they need in order to make a decision yeah. as to whether they're to buy it or not. Yeah, that's, that's the true. purpose. But even in this in this case. We didn't even have to. They just sent it to us, yeah. and it's not like we've been nice to them in the past. Yeah, we've been talking about all of the numerous controversies. Yeah. They've to been be doing. fair, we shit on them for making shit. To games. be fair to Ubisoft, they take that all on the chin by the the sounds of it, because <laughs> if yeah. they've seen any of our previous uh, you know game coverage of Ubisoft, they may well think twice about sending us games. But I think you were being fair in both those reviews. Um, you know, Watch Dogs Legion could could and should be better. Assassin's Creed Valhalla has its has its plus points there's a lot to like about that game i think i yeah. think you're ve you were very fair that's not a ringing endorsement of either the, of those games really because there are people that both of those games will appeal to and not appeal to like a, some people might someone might watch both those reviews and think nah these games are not for me but that's the job as a reviewer to to have a good representation of the game in the review so that people or, or you know the impressions video that he did for valhalla um so that they can understand whether they need to want to buy it or not. That's the point. It's not about taking money off Ubisoft, yeah. and and that that's just a, uh, uh, just it's just. I think, it's just I think people are too binary. You either have to come down hard on one side or the other. Whereas I always try to be as balanced as possible. And so that this leads into one of the more recent comments, which is someone called Carl Barbosa. I don't feel their reviews dishonest. Just don't have strict standards. I'm like. Well, again, this isn't a review, it's an impression, and it was based on questions that I I uh, got from um, Discord. Yeah. So if, if they don't mention anything that is, like, I'm massively negative on, then I'm not going to say it. Like, load times, fucking hell, there's a lot of load mm. times. I think I mentioned how performance in general is pretty shit. I commented back to someone in the comment saying, oh, should I wait until next gen or buy it now? I said, wait till next gen. Everyone's like, shit at the moment. Yeah. So I don't really know what you mean by I uh, don't have strict standards. I was as... Well, I, well, to be fair, if it was a review, like the Watch Dogs one, I was hard on them as I am on anyone. But if it has good things, I'm going to say it has good things. And I, in general, I really like um, whatever this game is, Assassin's Creed Valhalla. I like it a lot. It's got, you know, its fair share of problems, but forgive me for uh, for for liking. Okay. Just like it, all that is, is this guy engaging his mouth or his fingers before engaging his brain. Uh, well, the thing is, two people liked it. Well, he, that's well, one of them is him. One of them is him, uh, and 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 just one other person who, who yeah. has a thing against Ubisoft games or whatever. I don't know. Some people are stupid, um, but this guy is definitely our dumbass dipshit of the week. Well, for fun, I'm going to read out some of the comments back to him. So, Cowden or or Ka Cowiden, uh, I all I know about you is you say righteous every time, and I, and I, I, I love it. It makes me happy when I see you show up. Righteous back to you. He said. Because two Ubisoft games releasing in less than less than a month apart, mate. Exactly. The fucking showed up at the same time. Seven likes on that one, so yeah, nice. Then Colony, you really uh, you really went in on this this motherfucker. I I almost replied to him, but then I didn't because I was like, well, I'll save him for a, a thingy. Colony says, "Oh bless your heart, you still believe in the Tooth Fairy as well? Do you really think this channel would even be looked at by giant corporations like Ubisoft to influence the masses, or do you think Ubisoft pays reviewers just for publicity? Let alone the fact that poor Henry here, absolutely in capitals, trashed Watch Dogs Legion in his review a couple of days ago. Even before he got the review copy, he spoke out about being worried that the features won't hold up with Valhalla. Did you even watch the Legion review, mate? Seriously, as if Ubisoft would consider PGG of all people." a game changer and pay them off for better quotes 10 likes you're fucking right that that yeah thing is if they did pay me which just to be clear in you know black and white they did they haven't just you know that's on the fucking table they need they need to um uh get a refund because they didn't get their fucking money's worth of the watchdog yeah. one like you know there you go. they paid for it they paid for me to say nice things but they uh I didn't say and nice if someone things. was paying for a review, you'd explicitly know that at the start of the, or paying for coverage of a game, you'd explicit legally you have to say it. You'd explicitly know that at the beginning of, of the video. This coverage is sponsored by something like that would be said, right? It, yeah, like Henry said, that would be illegal. So we've done it in the past. I think we did um, Hearthstone, uh, an expansion. Uh, it's a Hearthstone single player expansion. Summer, yeah, and. We didn't do a review for that case because we knew it couldn't be, it could then ever be an objective review mm. if we were getting paid. So it was just yeah. like we played the game and give our impressions of it and, and give our honest opinions. 
Um, that's what they wanted. So that, that's how it works, right? You have to say that at the very beginning, though. So, um, yeah, what a dipshit. <laughs> well, on, on a similar note, I've got one here, which I think I, I think it I, um, epitomizes a lot of how people view games these days. And YouTube and Twitch is partly to blame for it. This is from Kiartan Ofstad. Uh, forgive me if I've pronounced your name wrong. This is the worst looking Assassin's Creed yet. This has to be a paid review. So, okay. Once again, you're accusing me of being paid, but you're saying this is the worst looking Assassin's Disagree. Creed yet. It's a game you've not fucking played. A game you have not played. And just to remind you, did you not fucking see how Assassin's Creed Unity looked when that launched? Yeah. I mean, that was it's very pretty in terms false. of graphical fidelity. Like, yeah, you are incorrect about that. Uh, um, but... You, you haven't fucking played it. The worst looking Assassin's Creed yet. I feel like so many people watch playthroughs and you know Twitch streams and all that sort of stuff and make up their entire mind about a game. I'm not saying don't watch those things. Absolutely watch them. It'll give you an idea of what the game's like. If it's for you, if you if you think you might like it, 100% do that. It's way better than any fucking trailer you'll mm. ever get. But don't... You cannot base your entire opinion on this being the worst looking Assassin's Creed yet out of however many... There's, there's been like nearly 20 odd now I can't, I can't even remember you cannot base your entire opinion on on how it looks that is disingenuous and i feel like so many people do it so many people it's like oh did you play the game no i watched the playthrough so you didn't fucking play it then did yeah. you it, your opinion is invalid and people I mean, then people be, be, will be like oh well, if it you don't need to taste the shit to know it's shit that is true but sometimes melted chocolate looks like shit and melted chocolate is really really yummy <laughs> So that is all I will say to you. <laughs> play a fucking game. If you're going to review it, play a fucking game. And also, on the topic of this game specifically, it's so long that I'm certain a lot of reviewers didn't finish it. Just like I didn't. Uh, many of them have disclosed it. They've done like reviews in yeah. progress or they've reviewed it like past the embargo or whatever, which is good. But I'm certain a lot of them didn't. Because, uh, yeah. I mean, you've got a lot to do. And you need to say... And then a few people commented saying... Oh, you shouldn't. You shouldn't need to finish it because it's such a long game. You shouldn't be expected well, to put 100 hours into a game. Like, yeah, you could play 15 no, hours of The Last reviewer, of Us Two and have a completely different idea of what The Last of Us Two is. is. Exactly. You have to, as a reviewer, you have to play it from the beginning to the end, to, uh, to at least until the credits roll yeah. and experience all the game has to offer. And I feel like this is a particular problem in fucking user reviews, especially on stuff like Steam, where you get people who will do the two-hour thing and then refund, which again. Do it. It's a good way to get a demo. No one does demos anymore. Totally encourage you to fucking do that. Take, make the most of it. But then they'll publish a review. It's like two hours and you've got, got a full review. You may not like it based on two hours. Absolutely fine, my friend. I'm not going to force you to play fucking like The Witcher 3 if you didn't like it because it's long as shit. But you shouldn't be putting out a review. That's, That's true. Just, okay. Not, my, anyway, we've rambled. Yeah. I've rambled. <laughs> you ramble away, Henry. You hefty, ramble away. Um, what did we call it? Dumb fucking yeah. dipshit of the week. I've got. To, I've got um, another question. Let's me. Let's move on. U M B R four. He says, uh, "Stop using silly facial expressions in the thumbnails for the podcast videos. Your content is good enough to carry the channel. There is no need to debase yourselves by resorting to cringy clickbait." I, I disagree. Oh. I disagree. Uh, although I, I do agree that the content is good enough to scale the channel. I, I do. Well, see, see, that's a very nice thing to say. Yeah, I, I like that. <laughs> but do we need to resort to debase ourselves uh, to cr cringy clickbait? Yes, we do. We operate on YouTube. This is how YouTube works. We're playing their game, right? We don't overly do it. These are faces we pull. I mean, that's... Well, you pick the worst possible face you can find from me. And I, I still think one of the other ones was better. It was. I, but, uh, I put a know, vote. Democracy, I put a democracy vote in the, in the Discord. Yep, yep. Uh, yep. And I said, which are the which are the cringy uh, faces do you want me to use for Henry this week? And it and was that, overwhelming. Yeah, it was overwhelming. Mm -hmm. I give them an option. Yeah, yeah. It wasn't even me this time. It wasn't. You can't even blame me. Blame the Discord. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, yeah. There you go. The Democrat. No, no, it's fraud. It's, it's election fraud. Election fraud. <laughs> yeah, you can count the count, count, count the too many votes somewhere, and yeah, you haven't, you haven't counted. Yeah, there we go. Um, do you have an, another comment? Uh, I thought I did, but I can't okay. seem to. Find. Oh, here we go. So this is from uh, Michael Boys. It's a pretty regular uh, commenter, and I just thought it's an interesting start it's a talking point. I never get tired of hearing you say Foster's Fevers, Henry. I love it. And then four crying, laughing faces. And then someone comes in, uh, Leo Renegade, what is Foster's Fever? And it's a, it's astonishing that so many people 
still haven't quite caught on. But to be fair, we did the explanation of that way back, like when we were still be able to see each other in person. Uh, so Foster's Fever is my nickname for the virus, which we're not supposed to say the name of on YouTube, although apparently you can now without getting demonetized instantly, but um, uh, I'm going to stick with it. I've been rolling with Foster's Fever. It's my favorite one. Sometimes I'll change it up. Yeah. So like Peroni Plague's yeah. a good one. Stellar Sickness is quite Carling a good one. But, cough. Ca Carling Cough. But I think Foster's Fever is the most fun <laughs> yeah. to say. It just, it's just... And because Foster's is really shit. I don't know. I mean, perhaps our... our um, non-British listeners don't quite know what Foster's is, but it's it's the worst beer you From can Australia, really find. From Australia, isn't it? Foster's? Yeah. <laughs> Supposedly. I, mean, I went to uni with an Australian guy and he said, Nobody yeah, we don't, we don't fucking touch that stuff. We, <laughs> we just avoid it. I, my next comment is from Casey Link, right? And is this is an um actually comment of the week. Uh, this was on yes. last week's podcast. He says, uh, only 30 hours, talking about when I was talking about playing football manager 20 for 30 hours in the last four few days for three or four days oh uh, only 30 hours and only maybe 30 can you even claim that you've played the game if you've played that nothing amount and saying you played a lot when you play very little for you played very little for F football manager also, how can you claim 30 hours in Football Manager is an obsession when people put thousands of hours a year playing it? That's obsession. Anyway, still hope you had a lot of fun with it. And just that bit, what you put surprised me. <laughs> I mean, I know what I'm... It, obsession is a... Um, I mean, if I'm even going to defend it, because I don't, probably don't have to, but obsession is a very personal thing, right? You know yourself if you're overly invested in something yeah. and to, in spite of everything else going on in your life, you're spending too much time on it, maybe 30 hours in a week. That's a lot of time. For, that's a lot of time for me. A lot of fucking time. And if I say I'm obsessed with it, then you got to trust me. Don't say I'm not obsessed. Yes, it's not objectively a lot of time compared with other people, but it's one week. 30 hours over a year is not a lot. 30 hours over a week yeah. is a fucking lot of time. Think what else you could do with that 30 hours of time. It's a lot of time, either. 30 hours. Yeah. Just not yeah. that many hours do in a any week. Any number of things. Yeah. Yes, exactly. There you go. <laughs> um, but but he, he wasn't like hyper negative. Oh, no. He was, he, just, he, he was just, <laughs> I'm actually in you. Yeah, yeah. he just, I'm actually in me, yeah. Um, okay, so I've got one here and it's on, I think it was Tuesday's video. Uh, which was about Mass Effect getting a remaster, which is uh, great news. And this guy's commented very similar to this before. John Blaze, you, uh, it was confirmed about two to three days ago. You guys are very late to every story. Now, there's always, <laughs> there's always some fucking idiot who is like, gets, gets annoyed that we're late to things. But for, I always say, we never get any fucking credit for getting there before anyone mm, else on no credit. the other ones. No one was really talking about the Avengers one. Well, I say no one. Um, uh, similar people in our sort of sphere weren't talking about the Avengers one losing 48 million. Although there's some conflicting reports because I saw Yong put his headline was 63 million or 60, I think, yeah, 63 million. But that's based on conflicting reports. On the Square Enix actual spreadsheet thing, it works out about $48 million. But on this other reporter, he said it was that. And, and that's converted from yen anyway. But... This guy says we're late. Okay, so this announcement was made on, I believe it was Friday. Uh, in fact, I'll get it up on Discord because we were having a little chat about it. You're going to um, actually him now. Oh, yeah, because I couldn't have possibly done it any sooner. Now, where is this thing from? Oh, bloody hell. It's not going to be in this channel, is it? It's going to be somewhere else. No, yeah, it could be in... Is it in news discussion? It wasn't in main. It must be in news discussion. Where's Mass Effect? Where's Mass Effect? This is... There it is. Thank you. I was killing killing some serious time. Oh, and it doesn't have a fucking timestamp on Mass Effect. Right, well, we'll go to the Twitter and we'll see when exactly that was posted according to Twitter's timestamp, which is currently loading, and it's taking me to the fucking page instead of the tweet. <laughs> Why is this such a pain in the ass? All I want to do is prove this dickhead wrong. Where's the fucking teaser trailer? You don't have to, you don't have to the... prove anything, dude. Right. Well, anyway, it was shared on fucking Friday at like 4 p.m. Some bollocks like that. At 4 p.m., I am finishing editing and probably stressing because I'm not going to get it done in time because Final Cut's been a little bitch and my laptop's screaming at me. Then it's the weekend, and I'm, I don't work on a weekend. Maybe 
Maybe, maybe I should be fucking grinding every day for this damn gaming news, but I'm not going to fucking do that. You have a day off and spend it working, you wiener. Uh, then it was Monday, which was embargo day for um, Assassin's Creed Valhalla. So the earliest possible time that I could have covered it was uh, Tuesday. And, like, what happened? So what if it's late? Like, it doesn't, doesn't fucking matter. Like, if you, it, you still clicked it. That's what I don't get. Like, if you already knew the information, that was the main story. They had it in the title, you know. If you already knew the information, just be like, oh, yeah, I've, I've seen that. Why bother? Yeah, you, know, you know what I'm saying? Like, why would you just watch it again and then come in and say, you're always late? I'm not always late. I'm often late. And I think that's a disadvantage of being in the UK because the core, well, most of the video games industry is in the US, so it's done on US time. So shit is always shared at a time when I don't have time to like write it into a segment and then record it and edit it. It's normally after I finished or at a silly time. Well, but being in the or like it happens in, in over overnight for us and we have to get there in the morning because all of these uh, American people can get there. But I don't give a shit about being too late. And the the thing as well, <laughs> I even put a top comment. I even put a pinned fucking comment saying yeah, I know I know where I was late it? or whatever. Uh I know I'm late to all these stories, but I just don't care. Don't care. There you go. Um, because I knew some dipshit would come along like, ah, I, well, maybe you're not a dipshit, John Blaze, but you've commented the same sort of thing before, and you even retracted it back then, because I think some, I'd search for it in the comments. Someone commented back saying, yeah, but I'd rather have a, a more, um, like, real, like, full, thorough discussion than rushing it. And he's like, oh, yeah, you know what, fair enough. I take it back. But you don't take it back. I wonder if you'll take it back this time. <laughs> All right. That's, uh, I think I've got one more um, comment to well, finish good, off. I think I'm, I'm exhausted. Jason Beneke. Uh, and this deserves to be read out he says yeah the end segment talking about the podcast the end segment is my favorite too because i'm just sick of you two knobs by the end as you are of all of us and then i don't even know what that emoji is it's like the half half smile and then kind of looks at the side yeah yeah i mean don't kid yourself jason beneke you you're not sick of it you might we might be knobs but you you're watch to the end exactly if you were sick of you're us. watching the end segment or listen to the end segment because you like us admit it you like us you like the content and that's just the way it is so don't come here giving me your shit trying to pretend that you don't like it when you quite obviously do because you're watching right to the very end you lying little you're shit you're probably watching to now on this you one. little liar now, when we get to this point we i hope you comment back <laughs> And just know, you're a such liar. a little liar, such a little liar. Your mum's, your mum's mad at you. Your dad's disappointed. <laughs> there you go. That's uh, that's the final uh, YouTube comment for this week. Let's move on to our final segment before the end segment, and this is the bad dad joke of the week. Brace yourself, then. Brace yourself. The Pillsbury Doughboy died. His funeral will be held at three fifty for about twenty minutes. <laughs> Oh boy, that was that is a sign of things to come, man. Hold on to your seat. Uh, I actually know. I'm holding. You ready? I actually know a lot of jokes in sign language, and I can guarantee you, no one has ever heard them. See that? That's quite good. What What do you call a depressed man with a robotic arm? I don't know. A cyborg. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, and that's that's your lot for this week that's it I don't, I don't want to put Henry to you anymore uh, and that's it and now well, let's move on to the 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 um, the fated end segment is that what I called it the- Ben Ben, ben AK or whatever his name is his favourite segment. segment this is, this this is, is the you, end buddy. segment that's it you don't have to put up with us anymore this is us saying goodbye and signing off for another week Henry dropping all sorts of shit around his there was my lens cap go. Uh, so that's it thanks for watching and thanks for supporting as always pretty good gaming over on Patreon as well as the join button if you do want to support us we really appreciate everybody especially the ones who watch the end segment because you you know more than anybody that we do struggle on youtube so we really appreciate everyone who does um, take the decision to support us uh, and that's it thanks for watching we'll see you again next time thanks henry for participating thanks you for watching we'll see you again in the next one until then bye for now